So hello everyone, I'm Sasha, the CEO of Virtual Performance Tool, uh, Flight 737, and I'm the software engineer behind uh, this project. So let me take this uh, opportunity of this uh, live uh, presentation to go through the OPT, uh, the feature that we have now, the up upcoming features, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the OPT. Uh, question section and uh, yeah, I will try to answer as much as I can um, after developing each section. So let's start now with the presentation uh, of uh, the virtual performance tool. So yeah this is project status uh, as me may know that's 737EFB project and it really started like a, just a personal challenge and now we're moving towards a more uh, professional tool uh, this is why, why this has been a, a great tool uh, a payword uh, tool and i would like to start maybe talking about the subscription i think a lot of guys have uh, many questions regarding uh, the subscription so what information you already have if you go downstairs you have all the uh, features obviously we're gonna go through and we have uh, here the pricing which are not available yet uh, but basically we're gonna uh, provide three type of subscription per aircraft type uh, and so the first one to be released is the 737 800 uh, with different variants so we have uh, the 800 whiskey 800 whiskey and uh, the 800 without the winglet we're gonna have the show field performance type one and type two. So that's the, f the first one that to be released. Uh, as you can see here, we are still missing the 800 and actually the show field performance two is almost completed. So the takeoff uh, performance is done, not yet implemented. So it's gonna be very shortly available. Alexi has uh, just finished uh, the, all the data extraction. I have to uh, first check them and make sure that everything works uh, as, as it should. And then uh, within the next update, we're gonna release the show field performance too. And we just need also to make sure that the landing calculation cor uh, are correct. Uh, we have the landing co co data for the show field performance, but it looks like there might be some differences. So we might need to go through that one as well for the landing part. Uh, and Alexi has also, also started the 800. He's going to take a couple of weeks, maybe one month, to finish uh, all the data extraction. Uh, basically, what's the difference between the subscription? Uh, well, obviously, is the as you can see here, we will have different uh, features that will be missing in the OPT Lite. And the more you go upward, you have the full functionalities. The calculation itself is um, exactly the same. So it's the same database. We will have exactly the same runway condition ev available. Uh, so the res result will be exactly the same. So we are more talking about extra features. Um, so as you can see, we're gonna have a fleet management uh, app that will uh, is not there yet. Uh, but it will be available um, probably within the next month or so, roughly. Uh, that will be able, uh, you'll be able to manage your fleet, change your aircraft weight, um, CG, and so on. So if basically, if it's like you're having a um, config file available, but online. Uh, we're going to talk about the customized AOC database. You will have a basic AOC database available, that's for sure. Then for very advanced use, we're going to make something available for the for those uh, very uh, extreme uh, and professional users. Um, no time, I will talk about this. We have some, of course, also the unknown normal condition and the failures that will be available with a higher uh, subscription. And the last part is probably the one uh, people have the most the most question about is the calculations limit. So the OPT will be limited in calculation per last 30 days. Uh, this is to avoid uh, fraud, uh, piracy. They have like accounts share with uh, a thousand person. So we are limiting the calculation, but as you can see, it's every subscription 
will be uh, dedicated to some kind of user as well. So if you fly very few or very, yeah, let's say like 15 flights per month, that uh, subscription group definitely suits you. Uh, and the more you go, you can go up to 60 flights per month. That's uh, tw two flights per day every single day. So I think it's pretty uh, broad uh, numbers. Uh, we have a, it's pretty large numbers uh, you, so normally you will not be limited you will not feel the limits on everyday use if for some reason we have a lot of reports saying that guys yeah, that's uh, very limiting and you are within let's say the the user target uh, we will adapt uh, we will adapt the calculation to suit the user so this is uh, a starting point we, st uh, we started with way, way, way less uh, calculation. Uh, it, it has been already increased by a lot. And I think, uh, I believe now this is pretty nice, um, pretty nice balance. But again, uh, regarding the use of the, um, um, with the next months, we'll see how we want to have a bit of more feedbacks. We can adapt if required. Um, if we, go over the calculation with there's an, uh, some other ways especially i've been asked like at the beginning when you, you may try a lot to pt uh, you do some a lot of calculation just to try it out uh, for that we have included 50 extra calculation uh, that is spread through the whole year or for all subscription so this is linked to your account not to the to a subscription and basically, that, uh, this, in, uh, this enables you to go over the 150 calculation 50 times, uh, basically. So that will help you out to try the OPT. Also, we have the, uh, the free demo that you can really use as many as you want to get used to the OPT. Um, uh, yeah, so let's see. Uh, I think I have some questions here. Let's see. Oh, sorry. Uh, looks like no, it's, everything's fine. Okay, so the, those are the subscriptions. Re, uh, regarding the price, so we are I'm not going to uh, release any price uh, tonight. What I can tell you is that um, it's still like depending on some factors, like we know we, we need Boeing approval. This will lead to some uh, royalties from Boeing. Yes, you have to figure out how many uh, that is. Um, so yeah, there's still some unknown uh, element here, uh, but roughly our well, reference is Navigraph. Navigraph uh, provides ERAC and uh, charts for 10 euro per month uh, for um, if you pay per year. So that's the reference we have. And I, what I can tell you is that the OPT Pro will be less. So it should be less than the Navigraph subscription. And this means that the other one will be, of course, each time less than the previous one. So I think we are there in a very reasonable range of uh, prices. Um, right, if you have any questions regarding the subscription, feel free to ask them in the OPT uh, question section. And uh, if uh, not, we're going to move to the next part with it inside uh, the EFB itself here. So of course, uh, once you will, uh, the, the subscription will be available, you can uh, press get started, subscribe, uh, register, create your account, and then it, you will have access to the EFB, pretty much the same as when you press try demo. But you have access to another, another app uh, called App Store, and then you can buy your subscription over there. Uh, install the uh, install the some apps and uh, personalize your EFB basically. So let's use the uh, demo version as uh, this is the one you have. So as you can see here now, the op uh, the version now is 0.9.4. This is uh, still in uh, beta. So there's some still possible bugs. There's still some work to do, uh, but roughly we have a pretty nice and stable version overall. Um, 
regarding the OPT and the subscription, you can monitor everything in the settings. So you have uh, your own page when you create your account. You can have all the information regarding your um, uh, personal information. And this is basically the information we have. It's everything is explained regarding your privacy. Uh, we don't keep a lot of information, but we try really to go to the essential ones. Um, you will get also uh, an API key linked to your account. Uh, this means you can sh uh, use it. Uh, you can use it in all the tools that will be approved by, by us. And uh, this means like we have, for example, ProSIM 737 that will uh, implement uh, ACARS data link requests to a server. So you can download, uh, make a request and download the result through the CDU. So this is a pretty nice feature. And any future uh, developer, de developer that will be approved will be listed here. And so this is, would be assumed as a safe place to give your API key um, and then use your subscription uh, elsewhere. And so you, you're not limited to, the, um, to this website. And the day we're going to release an iOS or Android version of uh, the tool, that's going to be the same way. You will have uh, your API key that will link uh, the app, the tool, to your account. You can have access to all your subscriptions uh, current subscription. So this is the, the demo. We have the OPT Pro and it's valid like for a very long time. You have some direct link to renew it. Uh, you can also see the, your statistics. It's pretty interesting to see how many take off dispatch landing, dispatch landing on route a calculation has been, uh, have been performed. Um, and then also there, this is the interesting part. You can monitor your, the usage of your, um, of your tool. This is maybe interesting at first to see how it, how the, uh, the choice of your subscription goes, but after a while you don't even have to really um, pay attention to it. And you have, so the last 30 days as the active restriction, and then you can see your previous month to see more or less where you are. Uh, this account, as you can see, it's it went above the 600 limitation, but it has some extra calculation available. So this is what you will have uh, when you buy the subscription, uh, you will have some, a certain amount of extra calculation available for you to go over that limit for some um, occasional use or at the beginning when you try to uh, understand how the OPT works. And you can monitor the last uh, about 10, uh, let's say, yeah, 10 calculation performed. Here the, in the demo mode, uh, the IP addresses are private. So I'm not sharing your uh, IP addresses, but when you get your own, um, when you get your own account, you will see your IP addresses available here. And this is if you have some uh, suspicion of somebody has stolen your API key for some reason or have any doubt, you can always cross check the last performed calculation to see if somebody else is using your, your account. And if that's it, the case for some exceptional reason, uh, you. You have to contact us. We're gonna change your your key. We're gonna reset everything, and you have like brand new uh, subscription. Um, well, we're gonna make a small investigation. But if it's if you are like a victim in the situation, then we're definitely gonna help you out uh, to get everything back. Um, like if mm, would never have uh, have uh, happened before. Um, and so to fi finally, some wallpaper you can just personalize the. The EFB. And let's now finally move to the OPT. I think that's uh, the part that uh, all of you are waiting for. So, the OPT. When you start the OPT for the first time, uh, there's some configuration to make. So, firstly, we will have this uh, pop up that will ask you to select an aircraft. So you have all the default profile available to you without the subscription. So if you, we uh, someday get the triple seven, you will have everything that you subscribe for available here. The use of fleet that's going to be your fleet when you will be uh, with the fleet app that when it's there, you will be able to create your own profile that are based on one of those. So you can select uh, which one you want to be based on, and then you can modify some variables uh, from it. So it will be based on this one, and then you can adjust the variables and create your own fleet. 
uh, the VF lead is something we are also thinking of is to integrate uh, virtual airlines into a system through many, many ways. I will uh, talk about some of them uh, while we go through the OPT. Uh, but the fleet is one of them. So if you fly for a certain airline and uh, you want to have a list of available aircraft with registration, for example, and then uh, they have some different weights and different uh, configuration, you can cr uh, create your own uh, VA fleet. And if the member is part of the VA, then he will see the, um, the same list as uh, um, the list of the VA right here. Um, so let's start to look here. So we have the 800 here, which is uh, not yet implemented, but I want to show you uh, one thing here. By selecting the 737-800, as you can see here, we're gonna, we have the 737-800 Whiskey display. So for now, temporary, uh, the 800 is using the 800 Whiskey database to, do the perf to perform the calculation. So this is a way you can also cross-check which uh, database we're using for the calculation. For in that case, the 800 is not yet done, so this is perfectly normal. Uh, let's re uh, select a new aircraft. On the 800, we have obviously the, the 800 whiskey. We have uh, the steel and carbon uh, variant, so that's the break type. And we have the FAA AASA database. This is regarding the MEL CDL. Uh, so this, there's two different database. Uh, so far for the 737-800 Whiskey, from what I've seen at compare the database, um, everything is the same. But it could be for maybe from other aircraft or some for some uh, special configuration that there might be some changes. Um, so we have a separate uh, database there. And uh, but, uh, so if something has to be changed or adapted or some other variant has something different, everything can be um, adapted here. So if you fly like in Europe, let's say if you fly for a virtual airline that's based in Europe, you can use EASA. Uh, if you fly from the state or somewhere else using the FAA, you can use that uh, database. Uh, and the show fee performance, uh, it's, as you can see, we have, uh, it's pretty much the same thing. We have the show fee performance steel in carbon break. And we have the Shofi Performance uh, Type 2 with the steel carbon brake and all the with FAA and again, all the same with uh, EASA. So let's select the uh, pretty standard one. Let's take the 737-800 uh, whiskey with steel uh, brakes and as some in Europe, let's say the EASA one. So now your profile is loaded, as you can see here. And you are using now this 737800 uh, whiskey profile. First thing you have to do is go to the user preferences and set up the OPT that you want to use. You, see, you will see there's a lot of uh, things available. And I will go through all of them and make some uh, example so you can see what can be done here and adjust it. Well, first of all, yeah, the default unit, we have the metric, we have the metric in meters. That means that the um, height are in meters. That's a false one. Uh, we have a hybrid one, uh, which is weight are in pounds, distance in feet, but with temperature in Celsius and uh, pressure in short mercury, height in feet. So it's pretty much uh, imperial one, except for the temperature. And then you have the imperial one, which is uh, temperature is at Fahrenheit. What is important to, to understand is that you can actually uh, enter temperature and pressure in any unit you want. I will show you that uh, later on. That will override the current uh, default unit. So that is very useful if you like if you're flying metric, maybe flying a long haul, 737, uh, uh, 800, flying to a, a, uh, a place when you use Fahrenheit or inch of mercuries, you can actually force the OPT to go into certain units without having to reset uh, everything uh, or the um, or the unit here. So that's pretty uh, neat uh, tool. Uh, yeah, from a feature. Uh, let's leave it in metric. Um, 
default echo account status. So this is the one uh, I told that we have this uh, pop-up when you start, but this, you can remove the pop-up by selecting uh, the echo you want by default. So if you see now, we are gonna use this, the same one we are using now. Uh, 77, 737 whiskey steel, yeah, that one. Uh, let's save it and refresh the page. Next time I'm, I'm still, uh, that is interesting. That is interesting. Uh, this should very good. This is default uh, version, and the, the issue with the default version is that we're not saving the the data. So maybe there's some something wrong. Uh, it should be saved locally. So maybe there's something wrong in the local lo uh, local saving. Uh, in the full version, this doesn't occur. So it saves in your in your settings, and uh, it works perfectly. But I will write this down to fix it straight away. Um, because indeed it's a bit annoying to have this uh, pop up every single time, especially if you configure it uh, for, uh, for it. Let's put here a second. All right. So let's see, let's do this again. Um, so like I said, this is still a beta. There's some bugs to find like this one and it will be very quickly fixed. Um, I know exactly where to look at for the those uh, things. Uh, Weather-wise, uh, we have an uh, integrated weather system that uh, uh, download the latest uh, meter and uh, TAF. Uh, this is not part of the real PT, so you can remove it if you want to. We use uh, obviously the, well, we have some source of uh, meter TAF, but we are used for the takeoff uh, dispatch uh, and the landing on route, we use the 80s. So if you want to stick as close as possible to reality, uh, you can remove that. That will be uh, that area will be replaced with the engine out SID. If you have the weather, the engine out SID will be displayed um, with the calculation below. And uh, if you remove that one, it will be selected right here. So as an example, uh, uh, let's deselect this and press save. As you can see, it's the weather that was here is gone. Now we have the engine failure procedure. I can select an airport and we, we can read it here, the engine out SID for uh, engine fair procedure, whatever you, you call it. And if you want to use the weather, then obviously you can re reselect it and then it's been replaced by the latest weather that we had for uh, Charles White or Bravo Charlie India. Uh, user preferences, let's go again. So last thing, uh, as you can see, you have seen, there's a red disclaimer here. That seems pretty obvious, but uh, that's not the case for some people. So that's something uh, I have to uh, legally put there, but I get it's a bit ugly. So it is a way to remove it, but you have to kind of sign this uh, disclaimer. Uh, this will be your, your name here, and then you understand basically that this is um, a content for flight simulation or educational uh, use also. But this, uh, any usage in real world aviation uh, is uh, prohibited. So that's basically what this all says. And then if you press here, that basically means you, you sign uh, the document. And if you press save, uh, I register the, the time, the text. So this acts like, like uh, your signature, and as you can see, the text has been, the red text has been removed, and it feels way more natural and way nicer this way. Um, all right, that's it for the general uh, preferences. Let's go to uh, let's go to takeoff. Uh, this there is a lot uh, of stuff here. Uh, we have the default uh, takeoff RTG, so basically the uh, the setting, uh, the D rate setting. Uh, by default, it's uh, on optimum, but uh, apparently some co uh, companies and SOP that want you to have some specific default setting. So it's included 
Um, but I would just use the optimum one, which is, I think, uh, the more interesting one to have. And then we have the takeoff flaps. Uh, we have two settings here. We have the use of optimum. Uh, the use of optimum is uh, basically to have the option to have the optimum uh, flap setting available. So when you select your flaps, you will have this. If you remove the optimum, you will have just the flap setting available. Let's put back the optimum. And of course, the optimum, what you, this will try to uh, get a flaps one takeoff. That's, that's the goal. It will get the lowest available flap setting for your takeoff, which is like usually if we have a long runway, uh, will be flaps one. If you have a very short runway with very limited condition, it, it will try to get the best option out of it. So you can get flaps one, flaps uh, 25 happens really, depends if you have feel limited, climb limited, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, in my airline, we don't have the optimum, but, uh, and we have flaps five by default. So let's put flaps five here. Uh, we have some, uh, settings for the air conditioning so if you want to use uh, perform a bleed on or bleed off takeoff by default that's really important that's by default um, usually it's left in auto that's uh, i've heard some stories some maybe some company using uh, non, by default no engine bleed takeoff but um, i think that's pretty rare uh, but it's there available if you want to then we have the improved climb settings. That's basically it's uh, a way to um, to improve your climb performance by increasing the speed. So if you're using the extra field, the extra runway available uh, to increase your speed with a higher speed, you have a better climb gradient. Uh, some, some airline use the, the use it by default. So in my airline, we don't. So you are free free to choose whatever you want. I will put this on off. Now regarding the V-speed calculation, uh, this is pretty important because this could lead to some misunderstanding and um, uh, some people think maybe there's some error or wrong calculation, but it's very uh, important to understand. So by default, we use the balance field uh, setting. This means we're not taking into account clear way or stop way. If I take the uh, flight planning and performance manual from uh, Boeing, and uh, go for the 26k take a speed dry you see that your v speed at some point they have corrected for clear way and stop way so the v1 is uh, adjusted um depending of course if your aircraft does is does have uh, this option or use the clear way stop way um, calculation included uh, which is, is not supposed to because it doesn't have the data from what uh, I know. Uh, anyway, so this is the, you see you have some correction. Um, so by the using, by using the balance field, we're not taking into account this. Uh, there are some situation during the calculation that uh, it will override this uh, setting because it's, it has to be done. It has to be, uh, um, there are some uh, sequences that it has to be over, uh, overridden. Um, so yeah, so you can use it or uh, the balance field, so no clear way or stop way or deselect and use the clear way stop way. That will, so that will really make a small difference in uh, the v, uh, V1 if your runway has some stop way or clear way. And finally, uh, yeah, no, so there's a bunch more actually. Standard AO seats, so engine out SID, engine uh, failure procedure, there's a lot of uh, name to it. Um, so basically, if you have no engine out SID uh, or no, no specific procedure because it doesn't require it one, uh, then you have the default text, no engine out SID. But some airlines still provide one uh, by default. And next, this is actually uh, the part when you can simulate this. So if by using the standard air seat, uh, 
the no engine of SID will be, will be replaced by this text. And so as you can see, maintain runway track. So if you use this code, it will be replaced by the actual runway track. 25 miles, so you can actually change it. Uh, put it 15 if you want. And hold, and this is like the inbound track, right turn or left turn. Let's, let's change it. Sorry, let's change it to uh, left turn. Um, and I'll say that we're not interested in this text and then you can remove this text. And let's save this. Uh, as we have seen in, Char in Charleroi, we, we, we had an engine failure procedure. Um, yeah, you will not be able to see it. So yeah, let me just re remove the weather for now. On 06, we have uh, this is also very interesting because it's not super. Um, hmm, that is interesting. Okay, I guess as uh, we write this down as well because it's not supposed to do that and I've done some testing before so that this one is very interesting as well like I said this is a still beta and this is why we we do that we do pre uh, presentation and we try to use it broadly and try to get some feedback to fix those kind of uh, small issues uh, yeah this is interesting but basically what we've seen here is that we have uh, the text has been replaced with this default procedure Let's go back here. Uh, take off. Let's reset. And if you remove that one, do we just simply say say no engine out this ID right here? This is, there must be some uh, variable that that have been over um, overwrite probably. Uh, probably a very easy fix as well. I will write this down. But uh, you can see you can see really the the two options that offers here. Um, so far, still no question. Uh, so I uh, keep going. Then we have the minimum flap retraction altitude or MFRA. Uh, by default, the minimum legal is eight hundred. But some airline, like uh, in mine, we use a high one. Uh, so let's put it here, 1,000, uh, 1,000 feet. Uh, okay, let's keep on going. And the last one for the takeoff uh, is a uh, very uh, US term, is the clutter that will replace uh, slush, uh, standing water with clutter. Uh, so the, it has some predefined setting. Uh, where here in Europe we can actually select slush uh, and the depth of the slush. Uh, same for uh, the standing water. And uh, in the US apparently they have the clutter and then they have uh, one uh, half, uh, a quarter, and then um, that will set a predefined contamination in there. So if you use that one, you will see that the condition here I changed with the clutter. And uh, if you remove, then you have standing slush here. All right, let's go now to the landing. Uh, the landing now, recently, uh, we had a big change in performance. Uh, it's called the new global reporting format. Uh, I have a link here, you can uh, go check it out. Uh, basically, it, ha it the idea is to reduce um, runway overruns and by increasing a bit more margins. So now, uh, uh, even dry figures have a 15% uh, margin included. And the assumed distance has also been increased um, in, the, in the calculations. So before we had no 15% margin in the dry figures, we had it from uh, wet runways and uh, contaminated. But so this is a kind of big change in operation um, because of course it adds 15% so in very limited runway sometimes a bit annoying uh, but it's there 
you can deselect it and use like the old system or just keep the new one uh, here and uh, this is an extra feature that does not exist in the real OPT but it's pretty nice and, and when I show it to my colleagues that's some an option that they all wish uh, to have uh, we use some uh, calculation to display uh, the uh, exits available on the runway. We are basing this on the opposite runway intersection takeoff. Uh, so that means we, that you get some uh, data to, to draw some of the exits. So not all of them are available, but some of, th uh, of them are, are. If you don't want that, you can deselect. Uh, let's go to the weight and balance. Uh, this will probably make a bit more sense uh, a bit later on. Um, but basically we have a virtual dispatcher that will I will uh, go deeply in uh, the explanation later on. And uh, you can basically use different accents. Uh, so it has some uh, voice uh, generators. Uh, this is linked to your browser and operating system. So here on uh, Windows Chrome, I have a bunch of voices available. Like let's try to go with Dutch and you can listen. Hello, Captain. So you have a bunch of uh, predefined voices available. Uh, the same where so the same uh, setting on the Firefox gives me like two voices uh, only. So the voice the accent system might not work for you, so you can just deselect it and you can adjust the default um, voice you you rather really have. Uh, U.S. English, U.K. English, um, French, Italian, Sp Spanish, and so on and so on. Um, so this is kind of disclaimer explanation here regarding all the uh, settings. Uh, we can force a bit uh, the RF CG distribution, um, but you have to keep in mind that it's, um, it's way more complicated than just selecting a, a button because there's some other parameters, uh, other settings that kind of work against that. So. Um, you can you can uh, select it, but it will not have that that huge impact. We're not aiming for the two thirds for those who know what I mean. Uh, anyway, this will be explained uh, later on. Uh, we can also uh, link um, the PT to your SimBrief uh, account. We just need uh, your SimBrief ID, which is uh, all uh, digits. Uh, I'll write it down here. So mine is this, and what the uh, it does simply it's a possible with SimBrief to uh, generate a flight. We're gonna do this uh, later. Just generate a flight, so it will be saved as your last flight, and I can import your last flight information uh, in the OPT. Uh, last thing here is a very interesting feature. Uh, real pilots very understand understand really what I mean there. Uh, most simmers don't, but basically what it is is. And a low a load load deviation. So when you perform, let's generate one flight plan here. It's it's gonna be a bit more clear for you. When you when you have received an OFP like uh, the one uh, we're gonna have it n now. Let's take the P uh, PDF version. You have some load. So this this is based on the on the bookings. So we have uh, now we estimate a zero fee weight of fifty eight. Uh, tons. So this is the estimated one. What happens in real life is that people don't show up. Uh, people miss the, miss the flight. So usually we are less uh, less than that. Also, when you have like ch children, your average weight decreases. So this also can uh, induce some differences in the in the weight. Um, to simulate that. I have included a load deviation, so we can actually go uh, to have something between zero and fifteen percent difference uh, from what um, has been generated, estimated. Sorry, here, what has been estimated and uh, the real load. So you will have some missing passenger actually uh, right there. 
and you can simu simulate that and 15% uh, is pretty uh, nice value that's the one that has been set by default you can increase to 20% that works still very nicely uh, if you fly and you simulate like the, the, the COVID pandemic uh, with a lot of cancellation uh, you can even increase up to 50% maybe like half a person not showing up or being refused at the gate because of uh, lacking documentation uh, so this is something you can really simulate and maybe reduce for like summer season you can even reduce a bit because probably more people uh, will show up um, at the gate uh, and that's basically it for the settings um, we go for the waiting balance we go every in detail uh, later on so now let's start with uh, the OPT itself so we have um, four tabs take off dispatch landing dispatch landing on route wet and balance uh, three of them are used on the ground prior to the departure so we have the take off dispatch landing dispatch and the wet and balance and the landing on route will be used during the cruise prior to descent or on uh, during the descent if you have some uh, changes um, to the runway conditions uh, let's actually re, re set the weather that will be interesting to have for the explanation so um, so yeah you have the tabs you can see that some field changes or are missing in some part that's perfectly uh, normal and you have the weight and balance over here on top you have some extra information you have airport info info no time emil cdl send or put us on the, those are come some uh, sort of um, extra uh, sub tab uh, pop-up that uh, it's linked to the to the current uh, tab and you have a bit more information here change log that's the general view you can reset the current aircraft you can select a new type of aircraft uh, manual is not available yet uh, and as we've been uh, as you've seen the user preferences you have some uh, info extra information like the Iraq so it is going to be updated um, it's just that I'm alone uh, doing all the job and I have uh, some other important things to do first but we have access to an updated uh, data and uh, we can uh, make an update every month or even more uh, if required um, you can see of course your uh, MERCDL database right here this is because we have selected EASA right here a pt version change log um, so you start with entering your airport so here in the demo we are limited to 15 airports and uh, with a full version we should be i don't remember exactly the numbers something between 3005 4005 uh, airports uh, around the globe uh, those include obviously the big runway so we're not taking a talking about a very small the field uh, grass runway and so on so it's really um, it's around 4,000 major airports for uh, that can uh, handle air, uh, liners like uh, the 737 uh, and so on so you can uh, make a search uh, let's go to um, let's try to make you can search with uh, yata code or akeo code uh, let's take another one just to have a look let's take uh, Stansted we can set you see the uh, Yata code and we get Stansted here the full information but you can also look at it at with the uh, oops sorry that's the other way, other way around with the Akio one um, let's take uh, show I'm familiar with and I can explain you a bit more uh, with the, uh, this airport um, so we have runway 24 uh, let's take that one and we have the runway, the, the runway has been extended recently so we have a pretty nice long runway now um, but before we used to depart from November 5 so we're gonna see a bit of differences that uh, this makes uh, as you have seen once you select the airport and the runway when we select the airport you get the latest weather available and when you select the runway you get some uh, airport info and no time um, button that's uh, are enabled 
and let's have a look at those so we have here a bit of information for the um, for the airport of uh, departure so you see it's uh, Brussels South uh, we have the runway 24 selected so we have the airport elevation we have the runway information so now it's 3200 meters long we do have a clear way uh, no stop way where we can see the slope and the landing distance available so we have a displaced threshold as you can see here a pretty uh, big one and this is actually the the previous runway that has been extended just for the takeoff land not for the landing part we have some uh, extra information here we have uh, the city country um, coordinates some comment on the runway we have uh, the runway entry um, the return uh, it does seem uh, uh, see like this one is not normal so it's nice that I'm, I have spotted it out so this has been has to be removed um, now let's see uh, runway uh, you have the runway heading runway width which is pretty interesting because the 45 is the standard one but some airports have 60 meters which are pretty wide runways and that means that you have some optical illusion so it's kind of nice to know where you are landing at and you have the pcn this is basically the the strength of the runway and uh your seat if any and now for the runway we have also the intersection details so now we can take off from november 5 uh november 4 or sierra 4 those, those are two of the, sa the same position just on the uh, two other side opposite one is on north side the other one is south side so you have your intersection detail you can see how many meters are uh, has been removed from the from the start of the runway and when you get some uh, no times uh you can you, you will uh, you will see it here and when you do some calculation uh, you will see it uh, right here now you have some extra information you have the obstacle so we have the obstacle for all the runway we have in all that database so that means we have uh, for 4000 ish airport we have uh, all of the runway have the obstacle um, obstacle uh, data uh, something very interesting that very few people know even like for airline pilot because this is not something we are uh, we've been taught is that uh, there's no correct uh, obstacle data uh, actually this uh, this will depend on the engine out SID if uh, you have one um, the way the the calculation are performed in the in the real PT and here in uh, in uh, O2, um, yes. Show me the obstacle. So it's based here. So you see obstacle limit of four flaps one. It's based. So you start from the bottom on the obstacle height and the distance from brake uh, release. So there's no turn to in take into consideration. So what happens is that we actually plot the obstacle along the engine out SID. So if you change your engine out SID, so the engine failure procedure is changed uh, because you make a left turn or, or instead of a right turn, or you make a turn uh, sooner or later, this will have an impact on the obstacle data required to have. So changing the text, changing the text for uh, engine out SID is not enough. Uh, you must supply the, uh, uh, the correct obstacles. Otherwise, the calculation doesn't make any sense, um, and this is some very uh, this is very hard to get, uh, and very hard to uh, plot. Uh, this is why this it, it will be included for very uh, in the OPT Pro, and probably highly discouraged to use um, because it is complex and it will can ruin your calculations if done incorrectly. And then you have some additional information on the update when the was that runway last updated so i've done some work on on this uh, airport because it has been a, a massively updated from 2019 um, 
so yeah, and have right, Leslie. Uh, yeah, last information. If you have a reload PT or have access to one of the picture, uh, this is really the information that we have. Uh, except, I will say the takeoff detail and reject takeoff. This is something uh, homemade and it's very interesting to have. Uh, moving to Notam. Uh, Notam, we have uh, this is a way to include the temporary Notam in the system. Uh, you start a flight, you read your no times and say, okay, this runway has been reduced by this many uh, distance. Um, so yeah, what can we do? What's, uh, um, so yeah, you read it and then you can implement the differences here. Um, let's see here. Uh, so you can start, of course, uh, with the units. That's for the distance unit, high units, and uh, the reference for the obstacle. Uh, because all uh, the obstacle uh, calculation is based on the break release point. Uh, and usually the, the obstacle are given from the end of the runway, but you can uh, actually change if you want to give the distance from the runway start or from the lift off end. So it's a bit up to you. Um, and same here obstacle height references exactly the same and then so you can remove from left at uh, the end uh, takeoff showed me from lift off end so that's from the last part and you see that your takeoff distance is uh, reduced and you can do the same for the landing part and if you're in the landing configuration um, by simply filling out the form here um, what is important to know is, yeah, of course, obviously your definition. Uh, TODA is the takeoff uh, distance available, and that includes the uh, the, the TORAD, so the takeoff run available, the runway, and it, it includes the clearway. So if you have um, if you have a clearway, uh, that's included into, into the uh, TODA. This is why you will probably see sometimes some difference here, maybe like three thousand and. Uh, 600 let's say um, here the TODA and uh, actually stop distance if you don't have any stopways uh, you, you get 3405 meters and by removing the last part of the runway you will also remove the clearway so sometimes you will see some weird calculation but this is uh, correct the correct one um, all right, so that's that in Asda, obviously, uh, like accelerated stop distance available, meaning that you you will have the stopway included in there as well. So the same thing uh, works if you remove, uh, if you show the takeoff distance from the end, it will also remove the stopway, obviously, because it's not available if you start to work at the end of the runway. I can add some obstacle. Uh, let's put 50 at 300, uh, 20 feet at 300 meters, no offset. And you press down, you see you have a NOTAM flag, and you will see that the obstacle has been added uh, to the list here. Uh, this one will not have any impact on calculation because it's uh, quite lower. If you uh, draw like the, um, the gradient, the line, this one it will be less restrictive than this one. But I can, if I change the 20 into uh, something like 40, 60, it's closer and that will have a kind of uh, interesting impact. So this is something you can try uh, out at home, insert some obstacle and you will see uh, immediately the impact on the, um, on the calculation. All right, so that's okay. That's this clear. Let's clear this out. Uh, MEL CDL. So this is something that's never been seen uh, before. I'm very proud of uh, including this uh, feature. Those two features. Um, this includes actually some failures uh, for for the whole flights, takeoff and landing. Uh, for the landing, we have something else also that I will uh, explain uh, in the landing page. But this will definitely impact your performance. Uh, let's have a look at some here. 
so it's all uh, released as uh, the chapters. So chapter two is uh, all about um, uh, two point one here. It's all about air conditioning. Then you have the auto flight, fire protection, flight controls, high speed protection. So if you know the FCOM chapters, pretty much listed uh, like this. So as you can see here, you have air conditioning. Uh, you may have some uh, pack in up. You may dispatch with the pack in up. You have to follow the MEL. And the MEL uh, will redirect with the operational requirements, the methods action to be performed. But also you will have to insert the failure into the OPT to have the calculation uh, correctly done. Um, as you can see, we have listed all of the failure and all of them work and has uh, different impacts uh, on performance. Uh, let's see what have some for example when if you take off with a two pack in up um, if you take off with two packs in up that means you you perform a no engine bleed takeoff so the this will restrict the usage of the air conditioning mode in auto so it will force you to go into the off position so if you try to make a uh, calculation with the mode auto it will say no that's not correct so you have to make sure that you understand that this failure means that you it's a no engine bleed takeoff. And then you follow, of course, the supplementary procedure for that. Uh, but at least it's covered uh, here. So there, there will be no impact in the, in the in, by penalties, but there will be a restriction in the, in the form uh, for this one. And you have obviously uh, plenty other uh, failures. And um, this one is more related to system, MEL is related to uh, systems, where CDL is related to outside of the aircraft. So now we have the same chapters, but you can see here we, we're talking about cover panels, seal, uh, landing light, so what you can see here, um, some assembly, uh, Sorry, lights here, retractable landing light, lens bulb. Um, so th there's so many things that can be missing or maybe locked in the wrong position and it will increase your drag and then reduce your climb performance, for example. And this is included here in the MEL CDL um, uh, feature. You can try, uh, try it out. Uh, and some of the um, Feature. I don't remember all of them, but re requested a uh, number. And you can see max allowed missing in op is 16. So uh, you can write the number of missing. And uh, this will obviously um, increase the penalties. Uh, so MELCDL, um, yeah, if you select one, you have the list. Uh, let's put let's see this one missing. And you, once you select one, it's displayed below. And you have also the CDL flag to remind you that there's something uh, there. If, uh, if it has been fixed or you made a mistake, uh, just clear the selection and it's gone. So those two, or actually those three, are uh, restricted with the subscription. So the NOTAM is uh, available from the, the standard version only, so not available on the OPT Lite. And the MELCDL is uh, available for the OPT uh, Pro users. Uh, this is something very advanced and hopefully by giving this data to the community, at some point we, will, we might maybe see some additional failures in uh, add-ons, uh, PMG, Zebo, ProSim and so on and so on. So hopefully this will uh, uh, increase the uh, realism of the uh, of the add-ons uh, by giving a bit extra pressure on the developer to, to implement uh, those kind of uh, very cool features. All right, let's go back to the to the form. So we have entered the airport runway in use intersection, and this is the runway condition. Uh, so we have quite a lot actually as you can see you have the dry good to good good to medium medium uh, medium to poor poor standing waters and slush um, this is a lot of uh, different data obviously 
just to give you a few example so we have uh, dry runway and then we are moving to and so we have the drive runway uh, conf data and then we have some correction tables uh, let me see sleeper runway that's the one so you can see that we have implemented all the tables, all the correction required for the weight and condition and we have in, uh, interpolated those two because uh, the good to medium and medium to poor uh, is missing so we made the extra effort to interpolate to simulate uh, those um, those conditions that we have in the real APT that is not in the, in the tables um, so I, if, if you have access to this kind of documentation you can really read how everything is done how everything is um, adjusted and so on and so on uh, with uh, reverse without reverse and so on so so we follow all this um, step and it's the same for the slush as you can see slush standing water uh, there's also some uh, depth and very deep calculation and v1 adjustments um, mainly the what will uh, be affected in those kind of uh, runway condition when a contaminated runway uh, is going to be your maximum takeoff weight allowed and your v1 uh, v1 is the decision speed as we like to call it but this is the um, earliest speed that we can continue the takeoff so that we have enough runway left to accelerate uh, to the rotation speed on, on a single engine but this is also the latest, uh, latest speed that you can reject the takeoff meaning that you have enough runway left to break and stop so when you have a runway a contaminated runway this will um, reduce your braking capabilities if you have very contaminated a slippery runway uh, your braking will be very hard so your v1 will decrease uh, and sometimes by quite a lot as you can see just one of the example if you have very light uh, weight uh, standing water something in the uh, in the middle six millimeters and you will see that you can have uh, on the sea level like 24 knots uh, reduced v1 so as, as you can see that's a huge huge difference uh, and everything is included for all uh, subscriptions uh, what can we can s uh, see here that we have the latest me uh, meter and a very cool feature we have here and uh, we have three buttons that are pretty useful we can force a refresh by pressing here and you have this small pop-up that shows up here saying that the web has been updated and we have also an automatic update uh, function it's I don't remember exactly the interval it's in, within a few minutes it just updates and check for new uh, meter if available so you might just uh, when using your PT get a small pop-up saying like okay wait the weather has been updated maybe that's a good time to read the new uh, meter and perhaps update your condition and uh, for the takeoff uh, the the uh, the one here is uh, a meter decoder, which is kind of neat. Here, it's very simple. Uh, you have the meter here, and you have some of the information. Uh, if you are pretty new to the aviation world, that's I guess very useful for you. If you're like me, the, I think that this takes more time to read than understanding this. Then <laughs> don't use it. Um, and the last one uh, it's a very interesting feature it allows you to import the meter uh, into the opt uh, with a simple click so if i press now we have uh, dry because it's not reported as uh, any rain uh, we have the wind that has been copied temperature and q &H. Uh, what is interesting is that when it's raining um, and the temperature is so when it's raining the the condition goes to good and if the temperature is uh, uh, below 10 degrees and the runway is uh, wet or, or so good condition or less it will uh, automatically insert the engine anti-ice um, 
so it will automatically select engine and TIs right here. Um, if you if it detects snow uh, in the NOTAM Minic Sierra November, and this is sometimes where you could get some wrong um, wrong selection, especially in states when you have a lot of uh, text in the meter. Uh, you can uh, get a wrong, um, so if it's in the text snow, it goes to good to medium uh, as like a safety um, uh, safety feature that to attract your attention, to, uh, attention to, to look at the condition, maybe go even worse than good to medium. So this is just a, recommend, a minimum recommendation. So um, you, you are the pilot at the end and uh, it's up to you to uh, decide what the runway condition is. Um, but so yeah, if you detect some text that contains CR November, it, it might falsely indicate uh, snowy condition and with a good to medium. Uh, I've seen that uh, recently. Um, but it's still a very cool feature that works with let's say 95% of the time now very very nicely and it puts everything here um, so what, let's go through all the things we have we have the wind 25012 it gives you 12 knots headwind 1 knots crosswind so every anytime you insert something it will give you the headwind tailwind uh, and the crosswind component uh, another way to enter the wind is uh, simply pressing 5 for example that means 5 knots headwind as you can see here and same for minus five, it means simply five knots tailwind. Uh, this is very useful when you want to increase your margin. So, okay, the wind is a bit variable. Uh, we don't know exactly from where. Let's put just the most restrictive one and let's put minus, like, minus five knots, minus 10 knots. We can even go up to minus 15 knots tailwind. And then at least you know that you're covered for those situations. So if the calculation works uh, for those conditions, any better condition would definitely work. So this is something we do uh, on the line sometimes to increase the margin uh, to be a bit more uh, conservative on the calculation. Um, uh, otherwise, yeah, you can enter the wind in this format. It will be automatically changed. Uh, you can enter, you can force the, um, you can force the unit here. Yeah, let's put uh, five meter per second. So you simply have to press M. So there will be five meter per second. It will be converted to 10 knots headwind and two knots crosswinds. Uh, so this is when I was talking about forcing the unit. So this is something you can do when flying to, for example, Russia, uh, you can force, you need to have those, uh, units right there without having to change anything in the settings. Uh, same goes for the temperature. You can uh, enter the temperature in uh, Celsius. Or here by default, the Celsius. If I put 10 degrees, it goes automatically to Celsius. So let's say now I want to put uh, 60 Fahrenheit. I can press F to force it. And uh, here we have 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, that's 16 degrees uh, Celsius. And uh, obviously the, the opposite works. If you're in uh, Imperial and you have uh, Fahrenheit here, you can force it to Celsius uh, by pressing C. Uh, let's back to, uh, put it back to 10. QNH 1008. So exactly, again, exactly the same thing. You can force it to be in uh, inch of mercury. You just have to press uh, India. So, uh, and in the other way around, if you're in inch of mercury and you, have, and you want to have the Heto Pascal, you just press H. And ex that's exactly the same thing happens here. It will force the unit. Uh, so on the left side of the form, uh, for every uh, page actually for uh, for takeoff and landing, the left side is runway um, runway airport conditions. So meaning uh, over environmental condition. On the right side, you have aircraft uh, aircraft settings. So you can see the RTG is an optimum. This is where you can select. Uh, different type of D rate. Uh, we usually, uh, in operation, we use optimum. If we have some very bad weather, we can go into wind shear. If we have some wind shear reported, that will force to go into the full 26k and also calculate. Um, uh, um, sorry, it will also calcul uh, calculate a uh, delayed v uh, VR, so delay rotation speed. Uh, and sometimes it's stressing to go uh, manually to some D-rates if you want to upgrade it. They say, okay, the optimum gives me a 22K. I don't want 22K uh, because of some company procedures. 
I want to have a 20k, 24k full. I press 24 and uh, do the calculation, select the full, uh, full one. Uh, I will make an example later on. Uh, so let's keep it up optimum for this, this first one. Flaps, as discussed previously, we have selected five uh, standards. So this is the five one is pre-selected. We have the optimum available because we have selected it. Uh, if we deselect the optimum, this will not uh, appear right here. Um, and if you have selected optimum as default, then it's going to be op obviously optimum selected right here. Air conditioning, that's the bleed. Uh, so we use the automatic, um, uh, the auto mode, which is like bleed on. We take off with the bleed on. You have the engine and the ice. Uh, so uh, if it's you don't need it, you put it off. If you are below 10 degrees and uh, you have some uh, reduced visibility, precipitation, uh, runway contaminant and so on, you can put engine or engine plus wing. Um, this will reduce mainly the climb performance of the aircraft, not, so, uh, not, the, um, uh, not the landing roll, let's say. Um, but the climb performance definitely because you will uh, get um, some uh, bleed air from the engines to warm up the uh, all the heated areas on the wing and uh, run in the engine. Um, so this will definitely decrease your performance. Uh, one thing to uh, know is uh, that when you on the seven three seven, if you pre uh, if you advance the throttle for the takeoff. The wing NTIs will automatically uh, re uh, reset to off position. So, if you force, if you use engine and wing NTIs, this means that after takeoff, you will select uh, wing NTIs on because of the conditions. Um, so, yeah, very rare uh, occasion, but could happen in uh, some, uh, some uh, nice winter operation with very cold uh, icing condition. Uh, definitely you can use this one improve cam as discussed that we will pre-select to off and uh, here we are then first thing to know is that the opt uh, the takeoff page has two modes so let's use the first one we're not, we're not gonna select any takeoff weight and no cg uh, by pressing calculate now we have a flaps five uh, take off. We have the MFW. We have the runway that's uh, been set here. Twenty-four uh, runway two four three of a full uh, uh, length, and we have here our maximum takeoff weight seventy-four nine nine zero kilogram. Uh, this one is linked with the weight and balance flexible weight uh, system. This is why it's, it looks low, but this is actually the maximum we can have uh, in this profile. Uh, let me just uh, pause uh, one second, please. I will uh, uh, I need to take a very, very quick uh, break. I'll be back in a uh, in few seconds. I ate a lot of tart for my grandparents. For tomorrow? Well, for me, for my coton to eat. D'accord. D'accord, j'ai encore faim, mais vraiment j'ai trop mangé ce midi. Il y a encore un peu quand même. Ouais. Ouais, encore, ouais, au moins une heure, une heure et demie peut-être. D'accord. Sorry, um, I'm back here. All right, so uh, we have now the so the result here for the calculation. So by not inserting any takeoff weight. Uh, we are calculating the maximum allowed takeoff weight. So here we're not limited as we can see. And this is, uh, like I said, based on the plaque of weight, uh, the flexible weight system here. Uh, not all profile ha uh, have it. Um, I will talk about this uh, a bit later on. But this real profile uh, is a very broad uh, one with a lot of uh, features, included just to uh, show you all the possibilities of the profiles. So we are not limited here for the takeoff. And we have the MFA based uh, on, I guess, the 800 uh, feet. Uh, some basically some information. And now we have the 26K 
that's uh, that's the maximum okay the 26k we have 97.6 percent n1 uh, no cg were given anyway in this case so we have no trim available no speeds and so on so this is the value we are looking for is the uh, limit uh, limitation if i go for uh, a november 5 takeoff that means we have a 2405 meters available and we press calculate you can see that already that the takeoff weight the maximum takeoff weight has been reduced uh, we have less uh, runway and also we have uh, we are closer to the obstacle so we have a bunch of uh, limitation right here and Charleroi uh, we have some obstacles in, in the runway uh, access and around uh, so it is really a limiting factor um, especially if you are like, very heavy doing a four hours four hours 30 flight um, with a lot of passenger this could be limiting so we ha then you have to um, find out some other configuration to increase it so let's uh, go for that and let's try to increase that um, takeoff weight so obviously we know that if we take a longer runway that will increase but let's try to keep it um, at november 5 uh, because let's say the the rest of the runway is uh, closed the taxiway to get in uh, the full length is closed so we are stuck on november 5 and we try to get more takeoff uh, a higher takeoff weight possible um, so what you do is play with the flaps uh, that's the first one let's stay here we can play with the flaps um, the flaps will uh, have a very uh, specific impact on the diff uh, in the opposite actually impact on uh, different things so if you are feel limited so you have a very short runway uh, increasing the flap setting will uh, increase your weight because you will you will be able to take off sooner so the wheel off will be sooner on the runway um, but in the other hand if you increase your flap setting to a higher one uh, this will generate uh, more drag and your climb performance will be reduced so usually flaps 5 is a pretty nice balance um, but in some condition you could uh, change and see uh, what can improve or not based on what you are limited um, you can try it out but also if you start to get uh to the, if you get a bit further into the understanding of the performance we have the takeoff details here and then you can see what limits you actually you can see that it's we're not limited for the field the runway is shorter but that's still fine that that's not what uh that's not the limit uh here the limit is due to the obstacle um obstacle limit weight so the obstacle limits the climb we are closer to, to them so this is the limitation this is what we have to work on so increasing the flaps let's just do it as an example will not um, that's interesting flaps 15 i have to check that oh yeah that's there's something wrong here with the wings let's put it something back here um see as increasing the flaps will reduce the takeoff because this will uh, decrease your performance on the um, on the climb part therefore this, this is going to decrease your obstacle uh, performance as well and that's on the climb so as you can see that's not really good so let's try flaps one and you have also a lower one um, this is ba basically uh, let's see here uh, take off detail that's does not gonna help us neither uh, probably don't that's that's gonna make you way closer to to the runway uh, to the obstacle when you rotate so that might not be always the best uh, solution uh, right here at the moment so let's back to flaps 5 which looks like a very nice balance so that's not how we can actually uh, gain performance Let's go to the air conditioning mode. We can perform a no engine bleed takeoff for following the um, following the uh, supplementary procedure, um, and this actually will uh, you you will either do an unpressurized takeoff or use the APU bleed to to work on the uh, on the pressurization while leaving your engine um, bleed fully in in the engine, and uh, therefore you have way more thrust available. 
uh, we're talking usually uh, it depends a bit on the tr on the D rate but you, you will get something between 0 0.6 and 0 point eight even the book says up, up to one percent uh extra n1 by doing this and again it depends a bit your uh, the condition and the, the rate it, it will uh, can get you up to one pounds extra of uh, takeoff weight so let's try to put uh ac on off and as you can see it's slightly it has been slightly increased so we have 515 165 so we gained 400 uh, kilos doing this uh, another way to try is to use the improved climb this uh, the improved climb like uh, i said before it's it's using the extra available length of the runway to um, to get a higher speed and have a higher uh, climb gradient as you can see now with the improved climb suddenly you are not, not a limit anymore but we we'll probably have some pretty high speed over over there uh, so that's as you can see some way of uh, dealing that also uh, pay uh, big attention here because improved climb means you have a higher v1 that will not be taken into account by the, your cdu uh, you have higher speed and that's not taken into account by the cdu the cdu doesn't know if you're performing an improved climb takeoff. So this is where you will get the differences, um, which is too perfectly normal. That's how it works in the, with the rear aircraft as well. Uh, but so yeah, if you see some big differences every time, check this uh, setting. If it's on, that might be it. Uh, that might be the reason why uh, you have uh, such a big difference, depending of course on the condition and runway land um, in your V speed this and the balance field option that those two options will definitely uh, change the the v speed and could make your calculation different from the cdu uh, all right let's put it back to off and let's try not to put uh, some weight let's try 65 tons so let's say now we have a 65 tons uh, aircraft i will put uh, pretty random CG 20%. That's just uh, also for the calculation. We're gonna get to the weight and balance uh, later on. Um, so we have now some weight and CG right here. We press calculate and we go into the optimum mode. So it will try to get the lower D rate available and the uh, higher ATM available for that uh, takeoff weight uh, in the condition right here. So let's press calculate. You see now we have a 24k takeoff with 32 degrees that means it's almost full tw uh, 24k 32 is pretty low and uh, the lowest uh, value is uh, set uh, it's explained in the fcom and uh, in the tables uh, it will depend on many uh, things temperature and so on uh, but roughly when you get to 30 uh, it can sometimes go 29 28 um, but roughly we are very close to 24k we have 92.3 and 93.4 as you can see uh we have uh, 0.9 difference uh that's not that that much um right here so again so what we have so we have the same uh, type of um results layout right here but now we have a fixed takeoff weight that's been calculated so that's not uh, the highest one anymore that's the calculated one uh see all the same information now we have a, we know that we have a reduced 24k so we're not uh so we have a 24k with some assumed temperature that's that's the n1 for the 24k with the assumed temperature of 32 degrees uh the trim the trim is rounded up uh to the uh, closest quarter uh meaning uh, 00 25 5075 and again 00 um I haven't found a real reason. Uh, there's no documentation for the reason of that. What I believe is um, this trim is there to uh, set, uh, obviously on the throttle quadrant, you have to set your, the trim. Your trim will also be calculated uh, by the CDU. And I think it's easier to cross check uh, a CDU value of 6.1 with a value here of six. It's easier to remember six 
and you see okay we have 6.1 in the CDU that's close that's very close that's that's correct so we can use the 6.1 from the CDU so I think that's the reason behind to make it uh, look very uh, round numbers let's say six a quarter a half three quarter it's very easy value to uh, read if you would have 6.14 here and you will see 6.12 in your CDU it might not be as obvious to compare them that's uh, that's my belief on the reason why is it uh, run, uh, run up to the quarter um, but interestingly uh, you will see here in the tick of detail that we have the row tree that's the real calculation we have it's actually 5.94 that has been run down uh, up to uh, 6.0 uh, but you can access to the information here uh, if you want to uh, but in real life we usually use we use this one as the other one is not even available to us uh, and now we have some uh, v-speeds uh, and v-ray 40 um, we all know v1 vr v2 uh, vr40 uh, that's a landing let's say like this like that's a landing uh, speed uh, it could be a bit weird to have it in the takeoff page but this is actually very interesting to have because uh, flaps 40 the vr40 is the reference uh, in the 737 so all the speeds you will have uh, the bug five uh, of the flaps five uh, flaps one speed flaps up speed we all be based on the uh, vref 40. Uh, this means like knowing the vref 40 is 141 i can tell you that the up speed will be 211 uh, knots uh, that's uh, vref 40 plus 70 knots uh, so this is still kind of very useful if you have some speed restriction during the departure you have um, I say maximum 200 knots um, with 65 tons uh, we have uh, up speed of 211 that's not gonna make it so we're gonna keep the flaps one until we finish the turn and uh, if we uh, do a calculation with say a very light aircraft 58 tons that's one uh, 132 plus 70 that makes uh, 202 knots for the up speed uh, if you have a speed and restriction of 200 202 is acceptable so you can uh, bug up retract the flaps and do the turn so that's kind of very nice information to have uh, right there let's go back to 65 tons um, if you don't want to use the ATM you can uh, force it to go to full um, so both are calculated the full value and the ATM if you go to the full, then there's a full 24K, it's written in the background, yeah, compared to here, ATM. Uh, full 24K, uh, you have the N1, and you have uh, your V speeds. As you can see, they are different, slightly different right here. Um, all right, that's basically it for, this is a, uh, one, uh, one example right here. So you can have your speeds, uh, the rate and so on um, the rule is uh, it has to be within one knot of the CDU uh, one knot different doesn't mean that the calculation is not precise neither the uh, add-on the aircraft or the OPT uh, the one knot difference is something we have every day uh, we have every, every day uh, sometimes it's spot on sometimes we have one knot difference there's no really there's no really uh, explanation behind it to you there's not it's not something you can really um, foresee when you when you do that the performance calculation um, but yeah one knot is acceptable so you can accept the v speed from the cdu when it's within one knot uh, from uh, above the opt speed prevails because uh, the opt knows more than the uh, aircraft cdus he knows if you want to have an improved climb. He knows if you uh, you are going to use engine and TIs. He knows um, the clear way, stop ways. So there's a lot of information um, that uh, the aircraft doesn't know. And this is why we have uh, the OPT. This is to re to perform the calculation. And so the V1, will, the OPT will prevail on the calculation. Uh, like I said also before, when you take off on the uh, wet and co uh, contaminated runway uh, well, wet you have the setting in the CDU but from uh, uh, good to medium and uh, below you will uh, there's no option in the CDU so 
you see the CD, the aircraft doesn't know that uh, you have a slush of 10 millimeters and then your speed has to be reduced by 20 knots. So it will still display you uh, maybe at best the wet speed if you have selected, but that's still not going to be enough. So you have to manually override and put your the one from the OPT. Uh, from the OPT. Um, so I, I hope that clears up a bit sometimes with the differences you have. So, um, so yeah, this is very important to understand how it's how it's calculated and uh, why is it different uh, than the one in the aircraft. Uh, regarding the speeds, you have also some takeoff details right here for full 22, uh, 24k uh, and assume the temperature. We have the VMCG. Uh, which is not displayed here, but uh, I have it uh, here available for you to, to have it. And so you have the balance uh, fields uh, right here. It's, uh, yeah, it's balance. V1 policy, we have uh, the, the V1 policy is, uh, my, is limited by the VR. That's why we have 139, 139. And in the full, it's uh, one, uh, it's not limited. Uh, let's see, it's 138, it's not limited, uh, as you can see here. Uh, Alright, and also for the rejected takeoff, I have added the cooling schedule. So if you reject the takeoff at uh, 80, 100 or at V1, you have your ground cooling time uh, right there. Um, so as you can see, if you don't use the reverse right there uh, at V1, you get in the caution zone. Uh, if you reject takeoff at 100 knots, uh, that's about 20 minutes of cooling um, before the next uh, departure. And anything below 80 knots, that's, there's no really cooling required. And you can uh, take off straight away if that's allowed for, uh, by your company per, um, SOPs and uh, rules. And depending on the reason of the rejected takeoff, obviously. Uh, some disclaimer message from the uh, from the FCO, uh, so from the QRH. This one, uh, this one is from the QRH uh, regarding the um, uh, the cooling. Uh, that's yeah, that's it. It's okay. So that's what we have here. Um, let's try something else. So let's go with the, to the wind shear. So this will uh, uh, make a calculation for 26K uh, full, so no assumed temperature, uh, takeoff, and it was a delayed uh, VR. We have an alert messages, uh, an alert message here, uh, sorry. And uh, it, this is basically the precaution to take during a wind shear, um, wind shear condition. So it will say that it's, um, it's based on uh, maximum takeoff trust. It's used, of course, uh, all the longest part of the runner you can. Uh, of course, you're using flaps 5, 10, 15, so that's the recommended ones, uh, uh, and so on and so on. So you can rotate at higher VR if uh, if required, um, and so on and so on. I mean, you can just read it that uh, out. Uh, so this is really some. Um, advisory information in case of uh, encountering to wind shear condition and how to uh, calculate the best performance for that. And so this is this is where the delay VR is, like in the real one, so it's amber. So you still, you're gonna use the first one, but if requ required, you can uh, delay the VR up to 147 uh, knots uh, here. Um, let me see if I think about something else right here. No, it's pretty much good. Pretty much good. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go back to the optimum, and I wanted to show you the improved climb. See how our speed now has been increased to 140. So same weight when we we were on 139, uh, 139 uh, knots for the V1 and VR. And we were 24K, so now we have uh, selected the uh, improved climb on. It means we are increasing the speed, so that's why we have 146. So now if you compare with this, your CDU, that's way off. We are like talking about 10 knots off. Uh, um, so if you don't know 
why that that could mislead you to think that one of the uh, either the add-on or the OPT is wrong. But this is perfectly normal situation uh, right here. Uh, so you see you can have way higher V speed and because we have higher speed we have a better climb performance and that's why we have to a 22k uh, takeoff now with 31 degrees. So we were able to even uh, reduce furthermore the, the N1 and then uh, therefore saving time, uh, sorry, saving uh, maintenance cost uh, of the engine. Uh, let me just take if I have any question right here. No, sir. Looks good. You are, you are either asleep or paying a very good attention to, my, to the presentation. Uh, all right. Um, I think we have covered pretty much the biggest, uh, the big part here uh, for the takeoff. So the idea of the PT is really defining uh, your needs. Uh, I, I can maybe do some example with some contaminated runway, just to uh, just look uh, at the impact that it can uh, have. So let's keep the same weight and um, go to uh, good, which is just like a wet runway. That's very common. And now we can see that we have already lower um, V1 uh, right here. So we still improve improved climb, that's why it's pretty high. Um, and now we have moved to a 24K um, takeoff, 34 uh, degrees. If you go even uh, lower, medium, as you can see now the V1 is like getting very, very low, 121. And that's a pretty high, um, I still pretty high uh, takeoff weight, let's say. So it's very low V1 for that uh, takeoff weight, but that's due to the medium condition. And we have now a 26K with 36, that's almost full 26K uh, takeoff. So if you go to medium to poor, now we're gonna be playing around with the limitation, maybe go a bit over the limit. Uh, still good with medium to poor. Uh, the the headwind helps uh, obviously if you if you have uh, some tailwinds that's gonna be extremely limiting and as you can see now the takeoff is not even allowed with the, the tailwind and that's very interesting also to play uh, around so can, if we have no wind that we are like, very very close to limits so you can see we have a 0 0.3 percent and one so basically the difference from this to there is um very very small and as you can see this um, there's no speed difference it's really that close to each other uh slush uh you have to enter the depth so let's put let's say uh six millimeters and just let's uh do a calculation so as you can see it's also not allowed uh, and then you get your maximum takeoff weight right here um that's yeah i think that's basically it we're gonna move to the next se uh, section um if you have any question regarding this uh, feel free to ask in the comment uh, in the in the optk question section um yeah, but let's move now to the landing dispatch the landing, the landing dispatch is a calculation done uh, based on the forecast weather we have um I would just take Charleroi as an example for something else later on. Uh, just let keep it here. Um, let's keep runway two four. <coughs> That's the most interesting one for the one other thing I want to show you later. Uh, so it looks exactly the same. In line dispatch, you have uh, the own information. Now we are <coughs> talking about the landing runway <coughs> right here, and you have so as you can see, you have some different stuff right here. Uh, they have landing details, landing brake cooling uh, schedule details, <coughs> landing runway exits. That's the one I was I wanted to show you because here in Chihuahua with the information available, we have some very nice uh, drawing. And landing of factor of, and factor I will explain to you uh, later. Uh, so this page has been changed. I can see Notam and the rest uh, is exactly the same. Uh, MSCG, this is the missed approach climb gradient. It's based on the um, single engine go around gear down flaps 15, um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is can be found in the landing section. Go around climb gradient, this does the one based on flaps 15 gear, uh, sorry, gear up, is it the correct one? 
Yeah, I believe it is. Sorry, sorry. It was gear up, fab safety gear up, and uh, engine bait uh, for pack on. So that's the those are the condition right there, and you have of course some correction right here. Um, so it's based on this. Basically, you lose an engine, you need to perform a minimum of 2.5%. That's the minimum legal required. This is why the 2.5% is pre-selected. But some airports um, where the runway is uh, limited uh, because of some uh, terrain in the in the uh, axis uh, may not be able to provide you a 2.5% uh, gradient. So it, actually, it will, but it will impact the minimum uh, of the sorry of the approach. Uh, so one that comes to mind I fly uh, from time to time is Thessaloniki in Greece uh, you have uh, landing on the so southbound runway you will have uh, terrain south and you have different minima you have a 2.5% minima which is quite high uh, which is very obvious because if you cannot make the terrain you have to start to go around uh, hi higher and and, and uh, they provide a 4% gradient available um, with a low minima. So if the aircraft can perform 4% with the, run with the, with the condition, it will, uh, you can select a uh, lower minima. So that's this very important uh, feature to select the correct minima during your approach. Um, so let's put 2.5%, otherwise you basically just enter here, let's say 4%. Uh, like in Thessaloniki, you have 4% gradient pre-selected and you can go back to 2.5 uh, right here uh, and select the one you want, comp uh, compare the performance uh, and so on and so on. Uh, same here, we have some uh, runway condition that are a bit different from the one on takeoff dispatch and the one in Lengo route. So those are the one from the OPT. Uh, we are missing, I think, one or two, but due to some missing data, uh, We'll try to find out some way to do it, uh, but that's going to be later on. Um, it's going to be later, uh, added way later on. Um, we have already had quite a lot of condition right here. Uh, dry, good, that's the two main one. Dry and uh, good is equivalent to wet, more or less. It's not exactly the same, but it's uh, when the runway is just wet, that's the one you use. And you have some uh, other con condition, compacting snow, dry snow, wet snow, sunny water, slush. In that area here, there's no depth to enter. So this just is it's calculated very differently um, based on some other stuff. So it's it's kind of interesting if to go a bit deeper in detail, but I'm not going to do it uh, here. Uh, but basically, we see that some calculation will give you exactly the same output. Uh, this is the same in the real um, rear aircraft. This is due to, uh, I think it's due to some uh, margin. Uh, so you're using so the same margin calculation or something like that. Um, so yeah, basically you preset, so you read your destination airport, uh, the forecast to say, okay, uh, we're going to land, let's say in this condition right here, for 40 high probability of uh, 4,000 meter show of rain, and broken CB, so it's going to be a pretty tough condition. So that's that the runway is going to be definitely wet, and the wind will be uh, so tomorrow. Ah, let's see, that's it's still in the morning, that's a bit gusty condition. Uh, that's still yeah, obviously, we're looking a bit far out uh, to, uh, on the data, but let's take this one that covers tomorrow as well. So we have an average wind of 250 at uh, 12. Again, we can also import it, but uh, it will import the METAR. So if you want to look a bit, let's say, uh, anticipate a bit for the future, we can have a look at the TAF. That's 250 at 12. Temperature uh, temperature is not present in the TAF, so we can use the current one or the one expected. So let's say uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon, yeah, it's going to be pretty much the same here, so you can accept the 10 degrees. And... 1008, that's the current one as well. And I'm gonna use it the flaps 30 or flaps 40. That obviously will give you some other um, different condition here with that wind. If you expect some gust condition, uh, when you don't want to use flaps 40 because of the very small margin you have from your VREF and uh, placard uh, speed for flaps 40, which is uh, 162 on the uh, 
800 whiskey. Um, so that's that could lead you with the with the VREF plus the win additive. It, it can get you very close. In some turbulent condition, it can very quickly reach uh, the maximum speed. So let's select ourselves at perhaps 30. Again, we have the same, same condition that's going to be affect the climb mainly a bit more of the landing distance in some uh, condition, but that's roughly going to be more about uh, the climb part. Uh, speed brake, if you select them uh, in the auto, it's, it's arm, or if the arm is broken, you can actually select it manually. Uh, this uh, takes a bit more time to select manually because you have to close the thrust lever, touch down, pull, the, uh, pull out the uh, speed brake, set the reverse. So th this action takes a bit more time. This is why you have a bit more uh, distance uh, required for that setting. And the reverse of trust. Um, reverse trust, I will go a bit more in detail on the uh, landing on route. Um, but here for the dispatch, we can try without reverses. We press calculate, and now we have a maximum landing weight of 66 uh, tons. Uh, so when that's the limit, the maximum one we have, and we're not limited. Uh, if you see that we go into dry snow, which obviously doesn't make that much sense with 10 degrees, but that's just for the for the example. Now we have way more limited. Meaning also that if you, you have this at your destination and you have a flight plan right here, where is it? And you have a landing weight of 62.7, even considering that you will uh, have a bit less passenger, but uh, maybe you're gonna take some extra fuel, so you have to define your landing weights and destination. Let's say you have uh, 62, 62.5, uh, uh, on arrival, this means that you cannot land. This is pretty interesting to know before you go there. Then you have to make uh, sure that you have a second alternate available uh, with the fuel to to that to, to the furthest one. So uh, yeah, this is very very uh, interesting. But you can also do some stuff like actually changing the flap configuration, flaps forty that will increase. I will uh, explain you why in the landing en route. See how we have increased it already, and we can use the reverse. The reverse are very effective on the contaminated runway. And let's see here, uh, yeah, not that much, but a bit more. Now we are way, way closer to the 62 than we were, uh, than we were before. And then this is where the decision-making process takes into account. Do we, have, do we take extra fuel? Do we, do we stick with this? Or do we take extra fuel and if we, if we the condition are better we can land if it's marginal we can divert so um so yeah this is the kind of decision making process that you can do with the opt it's pretty important uh right there um all right and then so for the landing dispatch again you have landing details you have all your limited weight of course with the with the runway condition the limited is uh, field is definitely the field limit weight right here um and you're not really limited by the climb performance but actually if you go back to the four percent you will see that um you will still be limited here with the f with the field but you will see that the go around limit weight is like 68 tons so you have some margin right here and you actually your maximum uh at limit weight so at 60.9 tons your approach climb gradient will be of 5.78%. Uh, so you can see here that you can definitely accept the 4% minima destination in that case. Um, let's go back here. Okay, that's pretty much it for the landing dispatch. There's not, not too much to do about it. Uh, if you have a look at the calculation, um, usually one press is enough. You take, uh, you take the latest uh, weather, you put it there. Uh, if you have a very complicated uh, day with a very complicated weather, you might have to do a bit more calculation, but usually I can see just one calculation was enough to have a very nice value and limited uh, landing weight. Uh, beside it, structural, I mean, not, not performance limited weight. Uh, calculation dispatch, uh, you have to do one for the maximum takeoff weight, one for the performance. Maybe sometimes like a third one to cross check or do uh, try something else, but again, a very nice day two, maybe three calculation is nice uh, enough um, for uh, for the takeoff. 
And now let's moving to on route. So actually, as you can see, I compared uh, to the old 737 EFB uh, OPT. Now this one, those two are linked together. And uh, what happens here, we have now the landing weight and the landing uh, is been reset automatically. Uh, this is this how it works in the OPT. You have to confirm the runway condition. It's not because you put dry or something before that it's the same right here. So you have to update the weather and make sure that you have the latest runway condition. So this is kind of a safety uh, net right here. Uh, so we have copied everything right here. Let's use the no credits for the example, FAPS 30 and uh, dry. Okay, let's just use that one, those, uh, this configuration. And let's put a landing weight of 60 tons. And you can see we have been, the weather has been updated now with the latest uh, meter. It's pretty much the same thing. The wind is slightly higher, but uh, that's fine. Um, so now we have the, you have two options of results. So you have your the text uh, results. We have your distance with the, with the uh, defined auto break setting. And you have the bre recommended break cooling uh, time right here. And this cooling time is based on the reverse setting right over here. Uh, that's is very important to understand because um, the select uh, reverse uh, here, it means that you are committed to use the reverse. Uh, we have talking about here legal requirements. You have to perform a, a calculation that says that you can land on that specific uh, runway with uh, the, uh, those condition that weight um, and that auto brake setting. So it's a legal requirement to that you, to be able to land. So you're not, you're not gonna try to land and see if it works or not. This is how you end up uh, out of the runway. Um, so this is a legal requirement, check your performance. Um, and by selecting reverse, you are committed to use a reverse. So you can do the calculation with reverse to check your cooling time. See, this is this, uh, the cooling time have been changed. On the dry runway, the reverse will not be effective or extremely small. Uh, it will, it will, it could slightly affect, but we're talking about like very, very small um, margin on dry runway. So it's, it's almost insignificant. Uh, although on wet and contaminated runway, it, it could have a very, very big impact. But reusing reverse can also have some um, very bad effect when landing on the contaminated runway with crosswind, as it could actually uh, drift you out of the runway uh, due to the um, the relative wind and uh, the trust uh, vector. So I'm not going too much into details, but uh, some uh, company may have some uh, specific uh, SOPs and rules regarding this. Um, so this is an option I have, it's pretty much, it's way more complicated than it sounds, just like using or not the reverse. Uh, it's not because you're also not, not selecting the, re create the reverse that you're not going to use them. This is just mean that you're not taking credit, so you're not taking account the reverse in your calculation. Um, so now, so this is, you have the text version available, you have some very main information, you confirm your landing weight, uh, then this is available to land. Yeah, all the auto brake settings available, including the max manual, uh, and your V fly speed. This is important this because it's e very easy to miss uh, read it. Although it's pretty clear here, it's a VRF 30 plus five. So this is really the, f uh, the V fly speed here based on the VRF additive right here. Um, so the VREF 30 is going to be 142 at the, uh, and you'll be flying at 147. Um, another way to represent the, the result are with the graphic representation, which is uh, yeah pretty uh, pretty pretty cool. I uh, really like it. Uh, it's very visual. It's very nice to read. Uh, what you usually do, usually do is just take this one out. You have all the information required except the um, the break cooling time. So I just go here for the break cooling time. and say go auto break three, uh, three, 42 minutes. Okay, and then 
I jump here and really have a nice uh, picture of the situation. So I'm going to spend an, a bit of time here because it's uh, it's pretty interesting and you can really visualize what's happening with the performance. Um, so as you can see here, we have this uh, runway, the runway 24. Uh, we have the scale here, that's the uh, 2,405 meters represented. And you have all the auto brake setting available in, um, right here. Uh, as discussed, we have four, 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 uh, 455 meters for the assumed air distance. Uh, this is uh, with a GRF, otherwise it should be a 305 corrected for some uh, temperature. Uh, basically, it's corrected for the TAS, so it's all the pressure temperature uh, related uh, stuff in there. Uh, but with the GRF, it just stuck at 455. It's way, way above than the 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 one uh, we had before. So it's roughly 150 meters uh, extra margin that we have with the GRF. Uh, if you remove the GRF, you will get the mm, the, old, the old calculation um, uh, in there. Uh, so for dry, this means that's also the, all those values are having 15% margin included due to the GRF. Uh, and when, if you're using non-GRF uh, setting, uh, so you, uh, you will have the unfactored uh, distance uh, on dry, but that's still the wet, uh, so goods, medium, and all the rest will have this 15%. That's, uh, that was already mandatory before the GRF uh, introduction. Um, so you can see, you can select max manual, max auto, auto break three, and auto break two and one is not legally uh, accepted. So you cannot select two and one. Um, very nice feature that I was talking about is those are the exits and that are based, as I explained here, is based on the runway 06 intersection takeoff. Meaning that if we have something right here, it's not available on the, the intersection takeoff, so it will not be displayed. So this is really for information only when the data is available. So if you have a runway with a, a single exit, a very short runway with a single exit uh, right in the middle, you will not have any intersection takeoff available because the runway is short. Uh, and this means that you will not have any exit information available either. Uh, uh, right, so now let's play around with the different uh, values right here. And so we have uh, runway two, four, yeah. and. Uh, Obviously, the condition. If you go to uh, good, as you can see, a more contaminated runway will have. Um, why is it better and good than our wet? Um, is it with the fifteen percent? That's that's weird. To break two is not available. Why is that? Let me write this down. I have to. Uh, this is something I want to check with the real PT as well, because that doesn't seem right. Um, although I had, although I had once uh, this kind of situation with a con more contaminated runway being uh, having a better result than, than the uh, than the. A better a better result and uh, more a better runway condition. So that is kind of weird uh, too. Uh, okay, I'll write this down. I will cross check that uh, later. Although the rest makes pretty much sense, right? As you can see, uh, max uh, auto to break three. It takes a bit longer. Um, distance a bit uh, further uh, away. Uh, and if the more you go down on the runway condition, the harder it gets to decelerate. And because at some point the braking efficiency is uh, reduced, the, there's not that much difference anymore with the uh, auto brake tree, max auto and max manual. This is an example. If you go now to medium, we're going to get those values that get very close to each other. As you can see here, it's out outside limit, but it's getting, getting closer and closer. If we try ev even like uh, something like poor, uh, this is uh, some protection, of course. Uh, it's max crosswind prohibit. Uh, okay, it's the length is prohibited with the poor condition. Let's just put medium and poor. Uh, of course, it's uh, we are 
out of the performance. Yeah, as you can see, it's, it's getting very, very, all the braking is getting very, very close because you basically are not, the brakes are not uh, efficient anymore. The, doesn't, the runner doesn't brake. Um, let's go back to something like mm, medium marginal. Yeah, let's try something like this. Imagine now we have uh, some snow, the runway is reported to medium. Uh, we have a bit some uh, headwind that's, that helps us uh, a bit in the calculation. And what can we do to improve our performance? Because landing at uh, this condition, uh, max manual uh, brake, that not guarantee that you will really apply to maximum brake. It's very hard to get uh, uh, the maximum brake pressure available. Um, so there's a very high risk, as you can see, to overrun the runway, even though you have 15% uh, included uh, of margin, that's still very, very uncomfortable. And I wouldn't want to land in those conditions, definitely. But there's something we can, some stuff we can do. Uh, we can increase the flap setting. That will reduce our, um, th this will reduce our VRF, uh, V fly speed, uh, V ref 40 would be lower than V ref 30, so with this less speed to, to lose. And as you can see here, we have uh, V ref 30 plus 5 again, uh, equals 147, so now flaps 40 plus 5 will go to uh, 140. We press calculate. Now we go to flap. Uh, did I do something? Yeah, flaps 40. Everything is moved uh, backwards. And as you can see right here, uh, we are very, very close. Uh, again, some s weird stuff going on with the break two. I still have to investigate that. Um, it makes sense in some ways, but uh, yeah, I still have to investigate uh, the reason then and compare with the real PT. Um, that could be very, pretty quickly uh, fixed. Uh, another thing we can do is obviously adding some reverse and with those condition, the runway condition, the reverse are extremely efficient. And now we have back with every, every brake setting available. Uh, again, which is still very weird for two and one, but uh, we're pretty much getting there. Um, I'll definitely cross check uh, the results uh, again. Uh, so as you can see, we have some way to play around. Uh, headwind will help us uh, to slow down. Uh, if you remove the headwind, of course, you, you need a higher landing distance uh, available. And you increase, of course, if you have a tailwind, that's even worse. It's gonna reduce your performance for the landing uh, here. Uh, all right, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, no, no, I will go through that one just after that. So as you can see here, you have the brake cooling schedule details. You have the ground in flight um, data. That's basically from the, the tables uh, that you find either in the QRH or in the FCOM. And uh, that's all been calculated for you. So in those condition, uh, no procedure required You're using the, um, we have 60 tons using the reverse is pretty good right here. Uh, so no procedure required. Um, when we exit, we talk about dynamic distance and factor. That's uh, the interesting one right here. Um, we have the, uh, the distance. It, this is very useful actually for um, uh, dry, uh, dry runways when you have to uh, look for an exit to vacate because we have the 15% included I've decided to uh, this inf to give you this information that's without the 15% uh, of margin right here uh, so you can better plan your braking to vacate um, requirements but this does not override the, requ the legal requirement from the OPT uh, and now let's put something back to all this back to normal. Uh, let's go for the no normal checklist. That's uh, something available from uh, the standard or uh, the middle of uh, our subscription. 
uh, and this is based on the, all the non-normal triplets you can find the QH. Uh, I've opened one right here. So if you go for the um, in the section seven, which is uh, all about engines, um, as you can see here, we can go for like let's say engine. Uh, just do a very simple engine filter without any memory items. So when you have this, uh, you proceed with the QRH, you, you perform all the actions. And as you can see here, at some point it says, plan to land a nearest suitable airport and go to the one engine uh, in operative landing checklist. And that's, uh, so let's take without the fail operational auto land capability right here. 726. Then you perform the one engine in the landing. So you prepare and you say plan a flaps 15 landing right here. Um, as you can see, there's no flaps 15 available there for normal operation, but you can actually select a failure, which is uh, engine inoperative right here. And now you have flaps 15 and, four and 30. Uh, the QRH says plan a flaps 15 landing, so you can select flaps 15. Uh, engine NCIS and so on, that all those stuff doesn't matter anymore. The MSCG is not uh, taken into account, so we're not really focusing on the emergency that you are having uh, right now. There's no, no credit right here. Um, and so now you can calculate a, f a failure, uh, as you can see here. So we, it's, you will need max auto to land there. And we include basically all. Um, different type of failure, speed and reliable. You have your three type of, uh, the three flaps available right here. Uh, still, all those uh, fields are, uh, have been, uh, are removed uh, because now the everything here is pre-selected. The aircraft knows exactly, uh, the PT knows exactly what needs to be done and how to correct uh, everything. Uh, so this is how it, the real one does as well. It just removes those fields. Uh, you can have all flaps sub planning, then the flaps is removed because now it knows that there's no flaps uh, available. Uh, you can have some very asymmetric and trailing age asymmetry, uh, disagree, and uh, depending where the flaps are stuck, I see like between flaps 1 and flaps 15, and so on and so on. So you can really uh, go through all the QRH that, requ uh, ch check that requires uh, a performance calculation. Uh, as you can see, loss of system A, system B, system A and B, uh, manual reversion, and so on and so on. So there's different uh, condition. You will read all the details in the QRH and you will perform the calculation in the OPT to make sure if you can land. For example, here in Charleroi, 60 tons, uh, you can land max auto. That's going to be pretty tight, as you can see. Um, right here that's pretty um pretty yeah you will need probably uh, most probably the full runway um uh and your speed will be around 195 knots uh, in that case uh all right that's so yeah that's basically for the non-normal trigger so it's kind of very nice to have if you are planning to increase your knowledge, the OPT line doesn't have this feature available. And uh, if you go with the OPT standard version, uh, you will get this one included. So you can start to play around with QRH and so on. If you really want to move over to a very hardcore uh, simulation, and you, you can unlock the MELCDL with the Pro version, for example. Um, all right, that's, uh, I'll say it's for the, Take off and landing performance. One last thing I haven't talked about. Uh, let's put it just back to dry. Send output. You can actually view. Um, you can send it to, to your your email. So some kind of summary, and also you can view uh, the bug card right here. This is kind of a, a summary also of uh, of your takeoff. So you can uh, see pretty much everything right here. Uh, you can print it out if you want. Ah, right here. Um, that's it. So now moving out to weight and balance. That's like I said. That's one of the most complex parts. Um, 
even more complex in some ways than uh, the take of this patch because I, I believe it's way more there's way more uh, variables to it and uh, this way it gets sometimes a bit uh, complicated to understand um, so the weight and balance uh, you have the, the tab weight and balance tab and you have some uh, sub tab right here and it's in that way it's pretty easy you go from left to right and you will be uh, just guide step by step what to do next so now we're on the setup uh, page you will have some interesting information so this is the profile we use uh, the real one so the vision of real aircraft uh, that shows you some of the capability of the OPT and then you can go with the, the add-on you're using right there uh, as you can see the if you go from uh, like one to another you can see the flight envelope changes uh, this is because uh, first of all we have some placard weight uh, we have a flexible weight system in place on the real where in the, this one we don't have is a maximum uh, takeoff weight in there. Uh, this is why it reduce uh, vertically, and the, uh, and the profile is reduced uh, horizontally as well because we inc uh, we include here in this profile an operational limit. So the basically it's uh, for operation it's uh, the flight level has been reduced. Um, so reason why i don't really know i guess it's to increase safety so you are let's say maybe less prone to um, error if in case of uh, you are you have wrong calculation you're slightly out of limit you have way more margin uh, being right here slightly out because you will still technically be in the flight envelope um, so yeah i guess that's the reason why it's really to narrow down the the, the width of the CG, so you can really like keep it right here, uh, increase a bit of uh, safety margin. Um, so yeah, th as you can see, this profile includes the this margin. The other don't ha include. Uh, so this is a possibility um, in the system for such a thing. Um, let's keep the real one for a sec because there's some other pretty cool stuff uh, here. Um, most of the um, uh, add-ons will provide with an empty weight and of the empty CG but here we can also go a bit further more in details you can use uh, extra crew that will be included in the weight as you can see as soon as you modify something and see the CG moving uh, out um, same goes for the cabin crew and you have a bit more explanation right here about for the fly crew is pretty uh, easy uh, standard you have uh, two in fly deck three in fly deck or four in fly deck which makes sense in cabin crew is a bit more complex so i have one is when the he or she will be in the forward galley uh, and when you have two is one in the front one at the back and you have three is two in the front one in the back uh, four is the standard operation there's two and two and uh, sometimes you have four uh, sorry in five and six uh, like i'm actually having tomorrow we have a five cabin crew on board uh, because one is in training so uh, she, uh, she will be performing like a observation flight or some sort of training um, so she's not technically part of the uh, of the legal crew but she's there for the training and as a supplementary crew right here so there's something you can also select um, right here uh, the catering um, here I've included some feature we have uh, in the real one we have a bit more uh, but this is to give you some uh, idea what can be done so we can actually create different type of catering uh, we have some packing in plan A and B that's uh, you have some weights uh, the weights are a bit different in the type of uh, food slash drink uh, included uh, slightly different um, as you can see if you select a or B uh, the weight changes slightly this is based on my uh, airline as you can see the weight changes slightly I uh, can uh, also have near counting and uh, air test so you have the card but there's nothing there and you, you don't have the card and um, but this you see I have the potable water included so everything is uh, Re reflected here because we're basing here on everything on the empty weight the real empty weight so not the operation weight with the fly crew uh, catering 
I include this really the empty weight of the aircraft without all of this uh, and the CG and then we can uh, go uh, create this operating weight by adding the flight crew, cabin crew, catering and the duty free. Um, not all add-on have, uh, have duty free. Uh, this one is uh, has, uh, it's, it's called duty free and we can select duty free. It's situated at the back so the CG goes slightly aft. Um, let's see, PMG has uh, something that they called international galley. That's pretty much the thing, uh, same thing here. It's, is it loaded or it's not loaded? Uh, Zebo doesn't feature such uh, such a thing, so it's not there yet. Uh, the day they do, we can. It's very easily uh, to uh, very easy to add. Um, yeah, so basically, let's keep the real one for for now. Let's put the Bravo and no DT free. As you can see, the CG is uh, out of limit for the takeoff. Uh, this is because of the restricted uh, flight envelope. And the flight envelope, the restricted flight envelope is, um, in that case, uh, is limited for the takeoff weight. So you have the extended one for the maximum uh, zero fuel weight and maximum landing weight right here. So uh, this is why there's only one that has been impacted uh, and out of um, out of limit. Although they all are the same position. So once you've done the configuration, you can move to the next part. Um, this is where uh, I pretty much get a lot of questions. Uh, how do you use, how do you get the values, uh, there's so many different ways. Uh, ah, I see I have an OPT question right here. Um, Takeoff CG equals landing CG, uh, yes in that case, yes because there's no fuel yet. Uh, so the CG is, um, the weight imbalance is empty right now. Um, this is why everything is equals. Uh, the, even the weights are here, uh, they're all the same because there's no passenger uh, yet. Uh, we have no cargo yet, we have no fuel yet. So this is uh, for now like uh, still the empty aircraft. So this is why the CG is the same. Um, uh, we discuss what affects what uh, when we get to the fuel section. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, no worries. I will, ask, uh, I will answer to that uh, when we get to the fuel uh, section. Uh, so how, how many ways there are to insert it, uh, the value here? There's plenty. Uh, let's start with the very uh, the first and very obvious one. You know the passenger figures, um, so basically you can just insert those. That's the first uh, one a way to, to do it. Uh, the uh, top section will define actually your average weight. So we do not sit uh, a child in the front, in the mid or the uh, aft section. We spread the weight of the child uh, f um, for the full cabin. So you will see, let's put 100 passenger. And as you can see, we have 84 kilos per passenger. That's the standard weight for the profile. So this can be changed per, per, for the profile. Um, now we have a total of 100 passenger uh, here and it's amber because none of them are seated in the, in the cabin. So if I just go, uh, let's say 20, 60, 20. Now we have 100, 100. Perfect. Everything works out. We have a uh, low distribution. Now we can see that the zero fuel weight, landing weight, takeoff weight has been increased compared to the empty weight. This is because now we have some load, uh, but we, we still don't have fuel. That's why it's still all together right here. Okay, now if you add five child. Sorry for that. So if you now add five, we have uh, five more to add. But what's very interesting now, we see the weight right here. It's 81.7 kilo per pax. Uh, so the five child uh, weight has been um, sprayed, made average uh, in the average weight. So now we're not, spray, uh, as you can see here, right here. So if I remove, you can see the, the weight right there. If I put five child here the average weight has changed and this is reflected in all sections so this is how the uh, opt uh, do uh, those sorry and uh yeah so that's how it does infant way infant uh pretty interesting as well so a five child we can put 65 let's put two infant on board and as you can see we have 107 105 and there's no amber uh color right here. Uh, this is uh, because 
as you can see here there's a note the infant are not included in total seated packs but they are included in weight uh stand weight for infant uh is zero kilo but it, you can technically change it and that will also impact like uh, the child weight is going to be in, it's going to impact the weight average weight uh but not um um but yeah not the seating configuration because an infant is uh, uh it's uh, uh infant below two years old so it, uh, he or she is sitting on the parent's lap so there, it's not occupying a seat uh, by itself that's why we have so we total seated passenger and total passenger right here and this is the difference right here Supernumerary super is something many use in my line. Uh, it's uh, basically any staff traveling. Uh, they are counted also like an adult, as you can uh, as you can see. There's no um, was, was there a change? No, because it's, it's um, not really significant compared to uh, the amount. Um, but it's it takes an account as a uh, adult weight, and now it has to be included somewhere. So let's say he's coming out from the front. He's saying hello to the crew and let's put it him in the front uh, section. And now the OPT is happy, it's no more amber and everything seems correct right here. So that's the first way to uh, to uh, to insert some weight. It's very um, uh, it's very nice because you can really understand and see how it goes for the testing. So it's perfect, but I do understand that uh, you don't always know how it how it's done. So. Even for us, we receive a paper with a load distribution and we just basically copy the figures from the paper inside the OPT and we check that if the load is uh, balanced uh, in, in the flight envelope, basically. Uh, so for that, we have a virtual dispatcher and this is where everything gets very complex in some way because there's so many things uh, in there. Uh, so now I have opened the virtual dispatcher with some information in there. So we, it just copies uh, the information it has. Uh, so 100 passenger, 5 in, uh, child, 2 infant, 1 supernumerary, and the load we made. So it just take the one from the OPT and loads right here. Um, let's, let's look at some other way we can uh, do this. Um, we can press generate. Right, so we can press generate, and this will generate a random load. But it's not as just a random load uh, as it's not as simple as uh, as that. We have very many many variables uh, to play with uh, to make something very uh, realistic. So you will never get uh, one hundred seventy six. Let's say one hundred eighty. That's actually full house, full load, one eighty nine passengers. You will never get uh, the next time you press generate. You never get zero. So we have actually included an average way, uh, average load, with a load deviation, uh, which is randomly. So uh, I think that in that profile it's something like uh, ninety percent ish uh, of load, and we have a twenty or is it a ten ten percent of uh, of deviation 10 percent deviation so you will be able to go like from 100 percent till uh, about 80 percent of passenger um, so it will always stay within those limits uh, so it will generate some ro random load in between those values that will prevent having some extremely different loads by every time you generate it so as you can see i press generate 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 and every time you get more or less uh, a more steady let's say random uh, lows this is based on your profile uh, i have uh, a question right here from mac uh, trying is your real 737 800 placard weight reflect the particular aircraft engine config as uh, it is not less than i expected to see up using this as a doc as a reference doc see page 26 uh, of 115 um so let's have a look at this page two six what i can tell you is that we have a variable dry, uh, empty weight um 
so this uh, any aircraft uh, in any uh, engine uh, will be linked to the empty weight as I understand so this will be yeah is, we're not uh, we, don't, we don't have the weight of the aircraft without the engine and then adding the weight uh, of the engine uh, so that we don't have but we do have the the empty weight by itself and this is something you will be able to configure in your fleet so you can adjust the weight um, as the empty weight actually depends on the load configuration how many seats you have uh, if you want to have a private 737 with a swimming pool in there in it it's definitely going to be different weight uh, than just uh, some seat um, so yeah i hope this answers your question we have an empty weight uh, right here let's, uh, let's empty weight right here so this is a fixed one linked to the profile so that's the good news you can uh, adjust it uh, it's linked to the profile um, and you will be able once the the feature will be available uh, will be there to to adjust the empty weight um, and so based on the empty weight we're going to add the, f the crew uh, catering and then everything will be um, uh, there here in the oper uh, operating empty weight uh, the placard weight here, yeah, I uh, uh, didn't spoke about those. Uh, those are the, the flexible takeoff weight limit. It's something that in my airline we do uh, to save cost. Uh, from what I, what I understood, is uh, there's some fees for airline to fly into some uh, FIRs. Um, so it's and the fee is based on the maximum takeoff weight. So technically, uh, we can always reduce the maximum allowed takeoff weight so it's like saying the max the boeing will say that you fly maximum uh, 0 0.82 and suddenly you as an airline say no no my rule is you fly maximum 7.8 uh, mac and so you can always downgrade uh, in the safe on the safe side and so this is basically what we do is we change the plaque of weight so now the maximum takeoff weight is uh here it's like a 74,990, but now if I change it because we have we're pretty light, we don't need that much weight. I'm gonna recertify, let's say, um, the plane as a maximum takeoff weight 66,9. This has been pre-approved by the administration, and uh, you just need an engineer, or in some case, the captain can do uh, the change, and uh, then you declare the flight as 66,9 and paying the price for 66.9 uh, tons instead of paying the full price um, instead of paying the full price when not using that weight that's that's the logic uh, of it so i hope i have answered to your question um, so let's get back to the virtual dispatcher uh, let's see let's see let's see right here um, so yeah, I was talking about load generation. So we have many variables. We have um, st um, loads for child, load for infant, load for uh, supernumeraries, so like any staff travel. Um, so you can say, okay, uh, now it's summertime, or oh, it's holidays, uh, we're gonna increase the child rate, so we're gonna ref that's gonna be reflected in the load. So now we have a lot of family traveling together, and going on holidays, so we have maybe like 30 child uh, on average so you can define really um, the rate you want to have and the deviation you want to have for that uh, uh, particular uh, uh, setting same for goes for infant uh, same for goes for supernumerary you can put at zero if you don't want to see any of those uh, you can put it uh, quite a lot if you fly maybe some specific route that you uh, you have a bit more um, uh, staff travel so it's, that's something we can really configure uh, it sprays uh, the load through all the the section available you have a nice uh, picture here of the load distribution and we can uh, we can make an example with an, some other um, uh, add-ons uh, to see that some the the represent different uh, the loads a bit differently in the sometimes in the four section sometimes five section uh, sometimes two section uh, for the hold so here we have a four uh, so everything is um, customable. Uh, yeah, I can customize everything uh, based still on the same 737-800 uh, for the performance. Or you can have a CG profile link to that uh, aircraft uh, right there. 
and you can define some low uh, some uh, packs load right here um, so as you can see not everyone everyone is carrying a, a suitcase or baggage in the in the hold so you can also define the the percentage you want there and again it's you have a um, average load deviation allowed uh, so it's not always the same values that comes back uh, you can do the same for the cargo you can have some very small cargo so you can define the maximum cargo you can you are allowed i think in this profile it's uh, 800 kilos but you can definitely change that to anything you you want um, and yeah so that's basically it uh, so it really defines uh, everything right here. Um, you can print that out and uh, display that in your fly deck. If you have a home cockpit or you just have a des uh, desk, you can get that one. Write down your call sign. You have your, um, that's the most important um, information. as the t uh, total uh, head on board or total souls on board, some uh, say. Um, which is the yeah technically yeah, total person on board the plane so that's passenger and the crew all together so in case of emergency you can say okay we have one uh, 114 souls on board that's written there so usually with this kind of paper we just um um how do you call this um um yeah put it just this part visible in the small part of the fly deck, that's the most important part, call sign, the total uh, head on board. Uh, the rest you can just unfold it uh, and uh, read if required. Um, registration is copied from the, uh, from the um, OPT form, so I haven't put any there, so there's gonna be just the one empty. The form two, uh, same, is, it is taken from the landing dispatch and uh, landing dispatch and takeoff dispatch. Uh, date is the date of today. Um, and again, for the hold, uh, when I was saying that it, it tries to, if you select the half hold uh, setting, uh, there's another uh, variable saying that which hold you want to load first in what order. So you can really define I want to uh, put first in uh, hold two, or if I want to put first in hold three. Uh, this would definitely have having big impact on your CG, uh, especially in doing the real profile. Um, with the operational limit, the flight envelope limit, it's going to be pretty hard to put the, a lot of hold in the back. Um, but if you use the full flight envelope, then you, you have a bit more margin to play with. Uh, so in this setting, he tries to get an half CG, but based still on the constraint that you have to put first the hold, uh, the, the cargo in the f in hold two uh, first. Um, so uh, that's why I say this is very complex. Uh, uh, it's a very complex uh, um, system. We have, you can implement so many variables to it really reflect what you want to, uh, to have. Uh, you have some supplementary information, like that's just something mm, just operational. If you want to reproduce like real life operation, um, you have a you have a supernumerary on board, and you have a assistance or somebody who needs a wheelchair, for example, assistant to get uh, down on the stairs. Uh, you can simulate that in your virtual operations. So, okay, now we have to call the the, uh, the op ground staff for the operation or the handling agency. Okay, okay we need uh, a lift at the back. We need some somebody to come. So this is yeah something you can implement or just remove by putting zero percent uh, in the in the setting. Um, once you have done the uh, we have done this, have generated the load you want. Let's put let's generate one something like here. Yeah. Perfect, nice. Uh, you have to sign. You see, this load opt opt is is not uh, available. You have to sign the documentation. It's kind of just a sm very small feature. Uh, you press here. This is your name. Uh, here we are in demo. Uh, this is uh, this. So this account is called demo mode. You have your name right here. You can just sign something, and you have the button available. Uh, Sim brief doesn't seem to work in the. Um, in the demo mode, although I put my Simbrief uh, uh, account, so um, I have to look at this a bit more in detail, why it doesn't reflect, but I can guarantee it, it works. And so basically what it does, it just reads out your last flight plan generated, and it, it will take all the, the weight bags, uh, all the information provided by Simbrief, and reproduce 
this form based on the information uh, received. Uh, something I've seen and uh, I don't know why it's there, uh, but some user have the in the scene brief uh, the the back weight uh, set at zero. So basically, the passenger do not carry bags, but you just have a bunch of cargo in the hold. Doesn't make that big difference when you just talking about weight, but here in the in the documentation, you will not have bags, but only uh, cargo. Then uh, for that, you will have to go. Uh, I don't know exactly where it is for the settings. I'm not too much familiar with the sim brief, um, but I, kn I know it's there somewhere uh, to the. Um, to check, uh, is, but anyway, is there when you have your, your probably aircraft setting or something, you will have this um, option and you can put some weight uh, in the um, for the bags. Then you will have bags and cargo at the same time. Uh, so the, the same brief option we just really import it, uh, import this, and use the load devi uh, uses the load deviation. Uh, from sim brief to simulate missing passengers and if you want you can listen to the dispatcher that will give you a quick summary uh, let's generate something with uh, jump seats uh, yeah it's OPRM that's fine and you can let's listen to the to the dispatcher good evening captain this is your load sheet you have a total of 189 passengers without any infant on board and 55 bags there are two wheelchairs at the back the loading is completed. We are ready to go when you are. Yeah, there it is. So you have a very nice uh, summary of uh, of it. You can list this just uh, like some uh, eye candy uh, tool. But if you're flying, you can hear to some uh, somebody speaking to you and giving uh, the actual load. I think that could be nice. Give a bit of life in the uh, in the fly deck. And now. Uh, that we have signed the document, you can load this into the OPD. Thank you, Captain. Have a nice flight. And uh, as you can see now, uh, everything here has been inserted, cargo as well. And if you use the SIM brief, you will have the fuel as well. Um, so everything will be set. As you can see now, we have uh, a quite full aircraft and we have set to 66.9. That's why we are very close to the limit. We are lim we have set a placard weight of 66.9. Uh, that means we are very close. If we go above that, we just have to change the weight of the aircraft, resign in the tech lock, we certify the aircraft. That takes just a uh, few lines of um, data uh, signature, and then we can uh, change the weight uh, of the aircraft. So if you go to 69, as you can see, it goes down to uh, 70 uh, or close to 70. If you go to 75, uh, 74.9, uh, everything is adapted right here. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, and uh, of course, yeah, like I said, the third option to uh, load weight is SimBrief, uh, the SimBrief fund. You just press one click and it just imports, reads uh, all the information from your from your SimBrief account, la la last generated flight plan from the SimBrief. Um, so this is very interesting to if you uh, if you see brief uh, import weight from with sim brief for the, all, all the tools available but if you use that and um, get your load there um, you can set the load deviation for, to zero and um, get the real values or you can uh, get the sim brief deviation uh, active with 15 percent and then you can adjust yourself the weight so this yeah many ways we can use uh, this uh, this tool or if you're not happy about the weight and balance because um it doesn't work that well you still have this take of dispatch line dispatch line in the root, um tool available it does not require the weight and balance uh to be set uh but the weight and balance we provide takeoff weight and cg automatically fill into the takeoff dispatch that's the only thing it does um really uh, regarding the performance tool uh, cargo is, I mean, there's not much to say about it. You have some weight, you put it there, and it will have obviously impact your CG position. So now if I put 700 right here, you see it was very far aft. Uh, if I, I put 4,000 right here, then you see like we are out of limit for the takeoff, uh, and so on and so on. So as you can see, you can really have a look right here on all the uh, loads 
the deviation of the CG from every load. Um, so yeah, let's move to the next one. Uh, this uh, aircraft has an uh, air stairs option. Uh, so if you use that profile, you can technically remove the air stairs. Imagine it's like broken, they had to remove it and it's not, um, it's not been updated in the profile, so you can temporarily like remove it uh, by clicking right here. Uh, the air stairs is at the front of the aircraft, so this means that the CG will move backwards if you remove the air stairs. I can see right here, everything moves back to, uh, to the aft. Uh, this is uh, some authorized change. Um, it's very rarely used. I will say um, this can be used in, uh, when the catering is a bit special, slightly different, it's not included in the, in the database. Then you, the company will provide you with some, um, some weight and arm positions. Okay, uh, in that case, you would put th this many weight at this position and this will give you a, co a correction for the um, for the uh, for the CG, uh, this could also be used um, if you have like a center pumps failure uh, in your aircraft and with some fuel. So this means that you, let's say we have uh, some fuel in the in the center tank uh, that you cannot use because it's like kind of blocked there due to the pumps being uh, inoperative. You can transform the fuel into a weight, a fixed weight. So it's like a it's like a cargo you have to carry on because they cannot use the fuel. So in that, that case, you can write anything you want here just for you to understand. It's a fuel. Uh, you have like two tons, uh, and of course uh, you have to provide the arm. Um, this is probably the hardest one to have uh, correct because especially for the fuel. Um, but let's take about 750. That should be something reasonable. And now we have, as you can see, uh, 2,000 uh, kilos of fuel included now in the zero fuel weight. That's that's some way of doing uh, it because otherwise, if you put it directly in the fuel, it will assume that you can burn that fuel. And so it first burn from the center and then go uh, burn the wing uh, fuel. So this is the behavior and the CG will not be correct by doing the putting the fuel that you cannot use in the fuel section. Uh, so yeah, you can up, uh, put up to three different things. Uh, honestly, I have never used that in real. Uh, I've seen some uh, company notes and so on uh, to use that in case of something like some particular condition happens. It never happened to me, but this is basically how you do. You make a note for yourself to know what's that line, the weight and the arm uh, of the position of uh, that, that load you put uh, there. Let's remove that. Uh, and get us back to fuel. Um, fairly easy. You just put your fuel load. Let's go. Let's take uh, the Seabream uh, value. We have a, a block fuel of uh, 10,758. 10,758 kilos. And that's really automatically uh, split here. We have main tanks, center tanks. Uh, so we have the full wing and uh, let's say almost three tons in the center tank. Uh, that's a lot of fuel, as you can see. And in it, the fuel moves the CG backwards. Uh, now, what's going to be very interesting uh, is the next step is the plan flap trip. Uh, and this is where we get to, uh, to your question uh, about the landing CG. Uh, so, where is it? Sorry, wrong tab. Uh, 5771 as the trip. So, 5771. 5771. And let's go with the uh, oh, always taking the wrong one. Two hundred twenty-seven kilo for the taxi. Okay, of course it's, it has been it has disappeared. Uh, and seven five seven seven one five seven uh, five seven seven one. Uh, so what does that do? Taxi out fuel. So as you can see that's the taxi weight you have and then the takeoff weight. So that's the fuel assumed to be burned during the taxi. That's, so that's where they slightly remove, uh, reduce your takeoff weight. Um, and the plant refuel will uh, create your, uh, that's the, the fuel you were planning to burn during your cruise. So that's ex is expected to be, uh, um, that will calculate your landing weight CG. And as you can see, we have this very nice, uh, I don't know if this will show a bit, yeah, that's better. Uh, this will show you the um, evolution of the low uh, of the fuel, of the CG position with the fuel from takeoff weight to landing weight. 
So because of the takeoff weight, uh, sorry, because of the center tank spin, uh, the center tank is uh, uh, forward. Uh, that means any fuel you put from the in the center tank will move your CG forward. This is the line right here. So we have two tons. So that's the full, this is the full wing, and this is um, and this is the uh, center tank right here. Uh, so if you move, uh, if you burn the center tank fuel, your CG will go slightly forward. Uh, sorry, correction, slightly slightly uh, aft. Uh, and then once you uh, burn, you start to burn your main tank fuel, uh, the CG will go back forward until you land. Um, until you land and you end up with your landing weight CG right here. So this is how it, it's calculated. Um, some I don't get it right. Uh, I believe uh, PNG Zebo have it right. Um, ProSim uh, and Simavionic uh, don't have a very correct um, fuel impact oh sorry fuel impact on cg uh especially the main tank as the hardest one to to have and basi basically both of them are pretty hard because uh the tanks are not something like uh let's say even so the shape of the tank and the fuel you put in there um the impact on cg is different so because of the shape the more fuel you put the uh the fuel will be uh the fuel is the center of gravity of the fuel will be slightly different because of the load and the uh, quantity you have and the shape of the um, of the tank um, so this is why it's pretty hard to uh, plot uh, but this is the correct behavior from uh, for the 737 and like i said the, some developers have it right some other don't have it right uh, i have adapted uh, to match the the adam with the, the adapted profile so at least you have something uh, that works uh, that works for um, for the add-on but this is the correct shape to to look for when you have a uh, fuel in the center tank uh, no no more no, no additional question uh, so yeah that's you will reach the last uh, tab right there we said everything is within limits um, there's so many information as you can see right here. You have the flight envelope, you like maximum landing weight, maximum zero fuel weight. So you can really uh, plot every every weight right he in here. Um, pretty much everything is custom uh, customizable. Uh, the maximum uh, uh, maximum weight, maximum uh, zero fuel weight, maximum landing weight. Uh, as you can see. And, and some more, uh, everything is pretty, pretty much, yeah, custom, uh, you can customize pretty much everything right here. Uh, fuel density, that will impact actually the, um, the quantity displayed right here, uh, because I assume the fuel tank are the same through all the, all the add-on. So the only thing I can uh, change is the way you measure the fuel density. So if you say that's uh, the standard 0 0.803, uh, that will give you some uh, some weight in the tank as we work in the weight. Um, I've seen uh, add-ons doing it slightly differently, so I, I adapted the fuel density to match their load. Um, but the quantity at the end in liters is the same uh, behind the scene. And that's pretty much uh, yeah it for the weight and balance. Uh, once you have everything in the uh, everything is completed to till the fuel and we have uh, everything within limits you can go back to takeoff dispatch and see that your takeoff weight has been copied right here cg has been copied right there and once you have all the condition ready uh, you press calculate and you have okay for 68 tons we need a 24k full takeoff uh, without CG, uh, uh, so without CG, the trim will be 6.25, and we have the speed with all this uh, improved climb, all the same thing we talk about. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's it, guys. Uh, we cover pretty much the full OPT. There will be, of course, uh, some other uh, stuff around it, like the fleet uh, app, uh, the app store that I'm working on uh, uh, to get a subscription. Uh, um, to be able to subscribe uh, on a take a particular subscription for the open beta and so on and so on
So I have a look if I have any last question. Uh, if you have any que last question, is the time to uh, to ask? Yeah. Um, and so yeah, as you can see, there's still a few, a few things to fix, but as the more testing we do, uh, the easier it, to, it gets for me to find those uh, small mistakes. And uh, usually when I'm, I don't have too much flights, uh, which is not the case actually in April, I'm, I have a very full roster, I'm flying the maximum legal time. I have zero time for myself, so it's getting pretty hard to, to work uh, on the updates uh, this month. Uh, it's been a bit crazy flying um, but usually I try to fix it straight away and um, as long as you subscribe you have uh, access to all the all the updates and I'll probably create um, so far we have actually uh, two LPT apps available we have one stable version we have one beta version uh, at this stage both versions are the same but I can actually implement new stuff, new features uh, for the testing version and keeping the stable one uh, available so if something is broken in the uh, beta version, it doesn't affect your, the usage of the LPT. Uh, for now, the beta version is closed, but I might introduce one uh, intermediate version that you can actually play with the uh, new features um, and access to like previews of the new features, but that could uh, have some uh, bugs right in, um, in there to report. So. Uh, so uh, CG shift, uh, yeah. do you support the CG shift in Zebo with fuel burn? Um, so what I did for the uh, Zebo, let's put, let's take one Zebo here. Where you have the Zebo has different of, uh, configuration based on the passenger load. So I've reproduced all of them, and from what I remember, you, this the. Um, Zebo CG, uh, you have uh, the, the tablets in there. I have used all the information I could uh, get from there. Usually what's happening is I get the, this kind of weight and I have to calculate this one to, by removing the flight crew, cabin crew weight. Um, so I, I try to adjust uh, pretty much everything to match the weight if you have any. If you, if you don't have any flight crew, cabin crew options, uh, I take the standard one to create this value, uh, but based that that when everything is is set, like see see standard here, that uh, the one eighty nine this should match uh, what Zebu has uh, at this stage, at least when I did uh, the testing. Um, that's fair. Just to, f uh, to answer the question regarding the fuel burn, um, from what I've seen, it looks pretty, it looks cl close or very, um, uh, yeah, from what I remember, it, 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 uh, it's pretty close to the, what I have. Uh, like when I say pretty, probably it's like within 0.1%, uh, which is like very, very nicely close. Uh, that's from what I remember. I didn't have to adapt the fuel burn. Uh, it looked pretty uh, nice, uh, at least on the, um, on the on the tablet uh, in the Zebo. Uh, the weight and balance page looked very good to me, so I uh, I left the um, fuel uh, CG impact like the real one, so that's very nice. I really had to change and redo all the plotting for uh, ProSim and uh, Simavionic uh, at this stage. Uh, so how soon before this app support the level up 737 uh, um, so uh, I ha really have to see actually what's in there and how is it different from the um, from the uh, Zebo one because yeah I think that's uh, test the Zebo mode I'm not sure um, level up I'm not sure about level up uh, but I mean, it's f it's very quick to make. I mean, if everything is th is the same and if the fuel is correct, uh, it could take me uh, half an hour, maybe one hour with some testing. Uh, I just need the information. Uh, that's that's the only thing. Uh, it's, it's pretty quick to to make. Um, 
So sure, but it support a change in CG with few burn and lag PMGD. Uh, yes, so that's what I meant. So uh, for me, the the Zebo uh, model, uh, if you want to go right, have a look right here, we have some load. Uh, let's just put something like 2000, 1000 to have something just slightly higher. Um, something like this. The middle something higher and if you take let's say uh, 15,000 fuel and you will burn let's say um, 10,200 as you can see that's the that's the Zebo uh, 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 profile so as you can see this the uh, this reproduce uh, the fuel burn with the with, with the CG so that works uh, for PMGZ, it works as well, it's pretty nice, at least in the EFB, uh, they provide it, uh, the fuel burn is pretty nice, and there's a Zebo as well. Um, so unless you have something like to to say that's very, uh, saying that it's very different and I have to change something, um, and I will do if it's uh, required, uh, but for me, it, to me it's pretty fine at this stage, it's, uh, very nice values. Uh, level up has does it on the graph? This sh uh, shows same CG for takeoff and landing. Uh, mm, I mean, on this example right here, that's not the case. I mean, it's m maybe they look a bit different, but here we have takeoff weight 17.3, landing weight 17.7. Um, so yeah, that's uh, it looks it looks very close, but it's just a bit uh, coincidence because as you can see, it moves very far out and then goes pretty much almost the same place. That's why it looks similar. But uh, let me give you a ten thousand feet and a seven thousand feet fuel burn. You will see that it's tot the place is totally different. But here we have seventeen point seven, seventeen point three. Uh, as you can see, it's it's way more. Um, uh, yeah, this yeah, way more difference as you can see right here. Uh, let me see. So uh, level up have uh, 600, 700, 800, 900, 900 uh, uh, extra range model. I'll show you, but range CG is still the same. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, okay, it's all uh, sold out now. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's especially with the sh uh, share screen and so on. It's not always easy uh, to spot, but uh, no, there, there is a difference. Uh, definitely, it's everything has been calculated separately, and uh, uh, there is a difference for uh, for the Zebo. Zebo PNG works uh, nice from uh, what I've seen, so you have all this uh, variation in there. Um, so yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Um, well, guys, that's basically if, if somebody else has, um, yeah, regarding yeah, level up uh, 737, yeah, if you really have to tell me if there's any difference, uh, I don't have like all the add ons installed and so on. So, if you tell me that the 700 uh, from level up is different, then I can uh, create a profile for them, that's for sure. Yeah, there's no issue there, um, absolutely no issue. Uh, the more profile is required, the more I will do. Uh, uh, that's it. Um, all right, if you have no more question, I will uh, stop recording. And um, thank you guys for following me on this well almost three hours uh, presentation. Uh, I hope you're still alive uh, on the other side of the computer. Uh, but at least I've, I think we went very really far into details on the uh, OPT. Um, it's not the best video, but at least it gives you a very nice uh, base uh, to work uh, on for the, uh, on the demo. Uh, we've noticed a few bugs uh, um, indeed, so we I would try to fix them as soon as possible. Uh, like I said, I have very, very heavy uh, roster right now, uh, flying like crazy. Uh, I can barely... Uh, very stay awake sometimes as uh, it's been very hard days uh, so uh, there's a lot of new stuff coming on so some bug fixes the 737 show people from the 2 that will come and um, 
I have to make sure that something because I've seen that I think there's something missing. Um, let's put something like here, 55, and I think there's something missing. Yeah, in, in contaminated runway, it calculates an ATM, so which is should not supposed to be the case. So that's going to be fixed in the next uh, version. Um, and I will yeah, let's if you want to be uh, stay uh, tuned, and if you see any. Um, so if you want to, uh, to stay tuned of all the updates and what's going on, you can join the Facebook page if you're not already uh, uh, a member. I post all the updates and uh, what's going on with the company setup. And uh, soon when I have all the information for my accountants, um, the process for getting uh, it approved by Boeing for the sale, then the set setup of the company, uh, that's all the things I have to go through. So everything will be... Um, shared uh, on the on the social media uh, just because i want to keep it everything transparent and um, so there's no big surprises uh, or misleading information whatever i really want to, uh, that everything is clear uh, that's why i have this uh, demo try it out we're gonna open up the beta uh, see if i have to check the time because it's uh, i will not be uh, be able to make uh, it available on time, I believe. Uh, again, this is because of my roster. They keep changing my flights, keeping gi keep giving me more flights, and I just don't have the time. Where any day I was home, I um, end up flying. So uh, it's been very crazy uh, last days, and it's gonna be the same for the next weeks as well. So I will try my best uh, to work as much as I can for t on this OPT. Uh, on your side, do as much as testing you 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 want and you need. Um, so yeah, of course, bef before buying, you know, at least you're comfortable. You know exactly what you have. Um, I rather you not buying the so uh, the subscription and at and rather than buying and not being happy about it. So I really want people to be happy. Uh, so yeah. Uh, thank you very much for all to joining me tonight. Uh, like I said, uh, join me on Facebook and uh, have a nice evening. Uh, fly safe.